Good morning. Had your breakfast. Tindilandro, Tindilin, the Ankoli. Good morning. So, as you people know me, who am I? Ah, Pinan and Pitkondi, the Rasa Paragila. Hello. So, which subject do I teach? Economics and? So, paper 4, last but not the least, the most boring paper of the entire CA foundation where students tend to sleep more rather than sitting in the class. Okay, that is what others assume it. Okay, so let's get started. So, in economics, we have how many chapters? Five chapters. So, today's class, we shall take up with economics, we shall finish economics. In tomorrow's class, we will take with BCK and we will complete with BCK. So today one entire day it is only economics. Tomorrow one entire day it will be BCK. BCK. So totally how many chapters are there in economics? So this five chapters will consist of how many marks? It is for 60 marks. So chapter one, introduction to business economics. Also I have given a marks bifurcation if I am not wrong. In your class itself when I was doing it, I said chapter one so and so marks, chapter two so and so marks. So chapter one, what is the marks weightage? 8 to 11 marks. So the minimum side will be 8. Maximum side is going to be 11. Next chapter 2. 12 to 16 marks. Next chapter 3. 10 to 15 marks. Chapter 4. 8 to 14 marks. Last but not the least. 3 to 7 marks. So previous attempt, few of them have already written it. So maximum number of questions have come from which chapters in economics? Huh? Chapter 2 and chapter 4. Almost like 14 marks. That is what I said. The maximum weightage is given for chapter 4. The next best maximum weightage is given for chapter 2. Demand, supply and consumer behavior. Both of this chapter put together, sometimes you can expect 50 to 60 percent of your paper. Last attempt, almost 60 percent, we can say, of the paper was consisting even from chapter 2 and chapter 4. And maximum side was from chapter 4. It was not from chapter 2. The highest questions have come from chapter 4. So, you can't neglect chapter 2 and chapter 4. Highly impossible. Even if you are neglecting one single unit out of 2 and 4, gone. Tirpti undi. So, if you do inky pinky ponky in exam, you know the statement. Ah, what is that? If you are doing inky pinky ponky on result day, you are monkey and your friend is Venki. Your friend is Venki. Tripti undi ala. Marks ala ali go giratte. So, let's get started. So, you know the flow in which we are going to do it. So, we don't follow the same like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We don't do it in an order wise. I have my own flow to be followed over there. First, we are going to do with demand. And next, we do with supply. After demand and supply, straight away we come to chapter 4, unit 2, that is price determination. After completing price determination, then we will come for consumer behavior. This constitutes a 30 percentage of your entire economic syllabus. First we go with demand, next we do with supply. After demand and supply, we take a leap to chapter number 4, that is chapter 4, unit 2, determination of price or price determination. After completing that, again we will come back to chapter 2 and complete consumer behavior. So, this is the first 30 percentage of your syllabus. Next, we will do with theory of cost. First, we will do with theory of cost. Then, we will do with theory of production. First, we will do with cost. Then, we will do with production. And then, finally, we come to chapter 4, 1 and 3, market and its types. Market and its. And this constitutes another 25 percentage of your syllabus, almost 25. Next, last but not the least, chapter 1 and chapter 5. This will be the last set. So, this is how the flow goes. So, let's get started with chapter number 2, unit 1, demand. What is chapter 2, unit 1? So, kindly open the pages, chapter 2, unit 1, demand. So, let's get started. So, if you remember, we took three beautiful examples there. So, if you have written the example in the material, 
then you will be knowing for example your name priyanka priya okay now assuming priya wanted to buy chocolates priya wanted to buy chocolates okay she will go to a big bazaar or a mega mart or a big departmental store where the chocolates are kept she needs some 100 or 200 chocolates okay she will go to the lane where the chocolates are kept she will pick the chocolates and she will turn behind say there is a teddy bear there is a i know it doesn't looks like a teddy bear but consider this as a teddy bear so uh, let me say four feet height teddy bear do you like teddy bear yeah sir what stupid question for a girl you are asking do you like a teddy bear okay now as a indians what do we do next the very first thing we do is price tag okay the price tag says rupees 9999 only uh, she is like cheap product cheap product she will keep it and she will come out now say sanjana if i'm not wrong or saundarya ah uh, now saundarya which is your favorite car istu ondu yochane madbeka ah rolls royce now uh, she likes rolls royce car now she will go to the rolls royce showroom she will be enquiring about her favorite car let me say a sales person he will be explaining each and every features about the car but end of the day he has to speak about commercials whenever a customer comes and speaks about let me say they they are showing the willingness to buy the car now the commercials part when the when it comes and the sales person say ma'am this car is just 2 crores this car is just just 2 crores she is like i will come tomorrow we indians straight away we don't say i don't want we will say i will come tomorrow till what time the shop will be open ah, i will come afterwards so that is how okay uh, say uh, next girl your name anushri now assuming that anushri and saundarya are best friends anushri is a daughter of mukesh ambani assumption assumption what is it assumption so anushri is a daughter of mukesh ambani now anushri and sanjana are best friends now sanjana will come and say hey anushri tomorrow is my birthday last year due to covid you didn't gifted me anything this time why don't you gift me my favorite car now she is like which car do you want tell me in my home there is a fleet of cars which is standing i will get you one no 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 i want a new car i want a new car my favorite car a new car okay let's go tomorrow now anyhow so, uh, let me say uh, she has said i'm going to come tomorrow for the sales guy now anushri and saundarya next today they will go to the same car showroom now again the sales person starts explaining about the car she is like anushri is like hey stop your bakwas what's the price of this car ma'am just 2 crore come here take this check give that car to my friend so she is gifting a car to saundarya anushri is gifting a car to i wish i had a friend like anushri i don't have anyone no, no one has gifted me even a single piece of chocolate till did but she got at least one favorite car that to just to 2 crore that to just 2 crore now these are the three examples which i gave in the class and i explained there are three conditions to be called as a demand how many conditions are there three. condition number 1 desire to condition number 2 ability to pay condition number 3 priya did you had desire to buy a teddy bear after seeing it yes you had a desire ability to pay just 9999 only hello she don't have it next if you had enough money with you were you willing to spend Definitely, sir. I like teddy bear. If I had enough money, definitely, even if it is 1 lakh rupee, I will buy. Next, let me ask Saundarya. Did you had a desire to buy your favorite car? Yeah, definitely, yes. Ability to pay. Willingness to spend. If you had enough money, were you ready to spend 2 crore rupees on your favorite car? Let her answer. Were you ready? Uh, definitely, yes. And now, Anushri, daughter of Mukesh Ambani. Desire to buy a car. Did you had a desire? Ah, not at all. Not least interested. Ability to pay. Again, what stupid questions are. Daughter of Mukesh Ambani and you are speaking about ability. Ah. Willingness to spend. Yes, that's the reason she gifted. If she didn't have a willingness, definitely she will not going to buy, let me say, gifted car. So, she also has a willingness to spend. Now, if you observe, one or the other conditions are missing over there. In order to call it as a demand, all the three condition has to be satisfied. How many condition? All the three condition should be satisfied. Which are those three condition? Desire to buy, ability to pay, willingness to spend. If you remember, I also gave one more example. This is a cricket bat. What is it? 
Assumption, assumption. What is it? Cricket bat, which is used by Rohit Sharma to score a double century. Now, I want to sell this bat. I will say, this bat, 1 crore rupee. Now, Priya will say, yes, sir, I am going to buy 1 crore. Now, so, let me say, Soundarya will say, no, no, I will pay 1.5 crore. Anushtu will say, 3 crores. No competition, get lost. Now, she is ready to buy this bat for how much? 3 crore. Now, I also said one more meaning for demand. Any commodity, it need not be a cricket bat. It can be any commodity at a given point of time. Now, for a given price, 3 crores. If a customer is ready to purchase, if a customer is, even that is called as a demand. See there, any commodity at a given point of time for a given price, if a customer is, even that is also called as, that constitutes demand. So, one, three conditions I explained. Second one, the meaning of demand. Which are the three conditions? Desire to buy. Ability to pay, willingness to spend. These are the three conditions to be called as demand. If not, any commodity at a given point of time for a given price, if a customer is ready to purchase, even that is considered as. And your ICI material has got a very beautiful language of explaining the meaning of demand. What is it? Desire packed by a purchasing capacity with a willingness to. The same three conditions, they have given it in a statement form. Desire backed by a purchasing capacity. That is nothing but desire to buy with the ability to. Last but not the least, willingness to. Same three conditions only. They have given it in a theoretical form where we don't understand the concept. Clear? So what do you mean by demand? Three conditions are there. Desire to buy, ability to pay, willingness to spend. Or if not, any commodity at a given point of time for a given. If a customer is ready to purchase, that is called as demand. Clear? So, this was the meaning of demand. After which we started discussing about determinants of de demand. So, there was a shortcut to remember determinants of demand. What was the shortcut? Pit, cat, PCs. What does P stands for? Price. The very first one. Price. Second one. Income. T stands for? C stands for? Climatic condition. A stands for? Advertisement, T stands for taste and preferences. Another P stands for population, C and S. Complementary and substitute goods. Pit, cat, PC. Price, income, tax, climatic condition, advertisement, taste and preferences, population, complementary and substitute goods. So these are the determinants of demand. What are these determinants? Because of these factors. The demand for a commodity will change. Demand for a commodity will? Change. When we say change, either demand can increase or demand can decrease. decrease. So, this determinants of demand is a one basic concept which we have to learn in order to understand the remaining concepts of demand, supply and consumer behavior. So, very first one is price. As we all know that the very first thing as a customer, what we look out for a product is price. Suppose if the prices are more and more, I might not purchase it. That means whenever the price of a product is more, demand will be less. Suppose if the prices are less, demand will be more. So when price increases, demand. When price decreases, demand. So this was the main thumb rule of a demand chapter. And this thumb rule was just related. Negatively. Related. That means arrow marks are in a different direction. They are not in the same direction. If prices are increasing, demand is. If prices are decreasing, demand is. So arrow marks are in a different direction. So it was called as a negative relation or indirectly related. And I also explained price is an important factor that affects demand to a dash extent. So the very first determinant, the price, that is going to affect demand to the maximum extent. No doubt there are also other factors. Comparing to other factors, price will affect the demand to a maximum extent. Price affects demand to a maximum extent. Most of the time as a customer, we think of buying a commodity or not to buy a commodity is based on its price, selling price. Only if selling price is satisfied, then we think about buying. If not, we definitely don't buy the commodity. And I also explained, there is a relationship between price and demand. What is it? Relationship between and such relation is expressed in a mathematical equation called as what? Demand function. That is D is equals to F of P. That is D is equals to function of price. That functional relationship is of two types. How many types? D stands for demand. P stands for price. 
that f is a functional relationship how many types of functional relationship two types number one direct relationship number two just now i said the main thumb rule of demand chapter is negatively related that is nothing but indirectly related what is that when price increases demand will decrease when price decreases demand will increase if the arrow marks are in a different direction it is called as negatively related or indirectly related suppose if the arrow marks are in a same direction there are few circumstances where even though if the prices are increasing demand will even though if the prices are decreasing demand will so this is positively related or it is also called as directly related only and only in few circumstances only and only in we have a positive relationship but in most of the circumstances we have a negative relationship that's the reason we call demand and price has got a indirect relationship or negative relationship in 90% of the cases the indirect relationship is going to work only in few circumstances only in few circumstances there is a dash relationship direct relationship or positive relationship best example gold diamond even though if the prices are increasing our people will not stop let me say buying the gold they still buy the gold even though if the prices are increasing demand for gold is increasing positive relationship arrow marks are in a same direction clear so point number 1 is price so what is it price is a one important determinant which affects demand to the dash extent and we also discussed whenever price increases demand will that means whenever there is a change in price whenever there is a that will change the demand that will change the hence forth price is a primary factor whenever we are saying the concept first importance is given for a price if price increases demand decreases if price decreases demand increases so due to change in price due to change in there is a changes in demand so price is a primary factor demand is a secondary factor or demand is dependent on what demand is dependent on that means whenever there is a change in price definitely there will be a changes in demand clear so this is point number 1 price any doubts so in pitcat pc if p is price what is i income as we already know that in order to buy goods and services we need to have a income that income will always represent what purchasing capacity if you remember i used to give the tomato example you have 100 rupees your parents have given 100 rupees to you they have asked you to get tomato if price of tomato is 20 rupee per kg how many kgs of tomato 5 kg suppose if price becomes 25 rupee per kg next day for 100 rupee how many kg yesterday my purchasing capacity was 5 kg today my purchasing capacity is such purchasing capacity is denoted or represented by dash income it is represented by so income represents dash income represents purchasing say our salary was 15000 every month when we go for a shopping we used to buy one pair of cloth now our salary has increased from 15000 to 20000 15000 to now when we go for a shopping do we still need to purchase just one pair of cloth sir one shoes extra one jacket extra like this i used to always have a wish i want to buy that commodity my income was less but now my income have increased so whenever income increases demand will suppose next month covid came up lockdown happened half salary now not 20000 10000 salary first question will you go for shopping even if you go for shopping one pair of cloth sir one track pant is enough sir who will say any how lockdown i will be at home so when income decreases demand will also positive relationship or negative because arrow marks are in same direction arrow marks are in so the relationship between price and demand is negatively related the relationship between income and demand is positively related and income represents dash purchasing capacity point number 3 tax so the most favorite point when tax rates are more will you buy more oh my god nirmala didi has increased the taxes i am in love with that product now i need to buy more and more will you go and buy as a customer behavior if the product prices are increasing because of increase in tax because of then definitely demand for such commodity will decrease so when tax rates are more demand will be less if tax rates are less demand will be even because of tax there will be a changes in 
demand and we also have a concept by name disposable personal income we call it as dpi whatever income we earn and whatever taxes we pay direct taxes if you remember i explained taxes are of two kinds direct and indirect, indirect. on income and wealth whatever we earn in that one single year whatever incomes and wealth we gain that is called as a direct tax should be paid on it whatever goods and services we buy on a day to day basis on that we need to pay indirect taxes mrp inclusive of tax which tax is that indirect taxes gst in india goods and service taxes clear so all direct taxes or indirect taxes anything for it matter that will cut down the demand so whenever the tax payable capacity is more the income earning capacity will always be the same but my amount which is added or maybe the amount which i have to spend to dispose that will become less that means i am getting salary of 20 Out of that two thousand, I need to pay as a tax. That means only my disposable income is eighteen. If such disposable income is less, demand will also be automatically less. So, what is that one factor that is driving the disposable income? Taxes. Again, the tax will matter a lot. So, there is a concept by name disposable personal income. Remember, income after the payment of taxes. Income after the payment of that is called as disposable personal. That is point number. Three. Next point number four. So definitely, the goods and services demand starts changing, starts varying depending upon the different climates and conditions in the nation. In a rainy season, we don't prefer to have a chilled coffee, cold coffee. We always want to have a hot cup of coffee. Especially in Bangalore, early morning you feel very chill. Early morning you want a hot coffee. Evening snacks, sir, we'll go to cafe, sir, cold coffee. Like this, depending upon the climatic condition, especially your favorite product, Coca-Cola. When do you demand them the more? Summer, rainy, or winter? Summer. In rainy and winter, the demand for Coke is going to be very less. I'm not saying it won't be there. It will be there, but comparatively lesser. If at all we think about summer, like this, many goods and services will get affected because of climatic condition. Even climatic conditions are going to change the demand for a particular commodity. Next point number five. Ah, uh, your most important. You want Katrina Kaif to come and hold the slice bottle. When the droplets are falling, then you feel like drinking. If not, you will not even touch that slice bottle. See that that is what. If at all there is a one pretty woman who comes and who will be dancing, and the one person will come and wow, I will use her as my. Let me say, I will uh, appoint. Let me say, I am going to take this lady as my next film heroine, and the child comes, mummy, Santur. See advertisement. Uh, that is what. If advertisements are more effective, if advertisements are appealing, a Colgate salt. One best example. Nimma toothpaste alli uppu idhe. One will say in your toothpaste there is a salt. One will say we have chakke, lavanga, pudina, double red, all pula items. Ah, uh, one Colgate salt, another double red. Mix it with white rice, it becomes which pula? Ah, uh, that is what. Uh, see like this. If advertisements are more effective, if it is reaching the customers. then definitely there is a high chances of getting the demand there are many products even you people have bought the commodity just because of its effective advertisement whether you continue it or not that's up to your individual choice but whenever advertisements are effective and advertisement is passing a right information to the customers then definitely demand will get affected demand will increase if the advertisement is successful if the message passing ability is correct then automatically demand will increase so even advertisement plays a very important role that will pass information about the product that will pass if advertisement is effective if it can able to reach the customers with the right emotions that is what in india will happen without emotion if you create anything it is a utter flop elsewhere in the world without emotion they will do everything but only in india emotions will work i used to give that examples cadbury advertisements in the class So that grandma advertisement, that washing machine thing. Yesterday you left your deal. Today I have left the chocolate, and you will come and say, "This is for you. This is for your efforts that you are taking." People are like, "Wow, good." Next time, see that is what. Especially this Cadbury, they want to replace this Moti Chur Laddu in India, especially at the time of Diwali. In India, the most selling sweet, especially during the time of Diwali, is that Laddu. So they want to make sure that in India they want to substitute that Laddu with Cadbury. So that's the reason. If you see their advertisements and all, if something good has happened, let's have the sweet. That sweet should be Cadbury Dairy Milk. So that is how they are portraying. See, that is what they are making the more effectiveness over there. If advertisements are more effective, that will definitely increase the demand for a commodity. If advertisements are not effective, if it is unable to pass the information to the customers in a right way, demand will 
decrease. So point number five, advertisement. Next point number six, what is it? Ah, Pani Puri. Before COVID, after COVID. Before COVID, test was amazing because it included all the blood and sweat of the individual. Superb, sir. Yummy test. So I go there daily. Now, sir, after COVID, no proper test only, sir, because he is washing the hands regularly. He is using sanitizer. So taste is not that good, sir. So if I like a taste of that Gobi Manchuri shop, Pani Puri shop, you go frequently over there because I like a taste of it. Sir, I prefer coffee over tea. I don't want coffee. I want tea. Preferences. I want vegetarian food. I don't want a non-vegetarian food. That is a preferences of a person. Even because of taste, even because of preferences. Demand for a commodity will change. And snob and Dublin, I will explain it in the later part. At the moment, we don't need it. Point number seven. Uh, India. Final achievement. Done. Uh, if census happens in 2023... Finally achieved. Number one, winners. Ah, ah, at least in this we are first. Ah. All great contribution goes to our grandma and great grandma. All our family members only, ancestors. Full population explosion after the independence. Ah, chalo, fine. When the population of the nation is more, demanding capacity will also be. I used to give that shampoo example, if you remember, one rupee sachet shampoo, how it can make a cross together a turnover. Especially a country like India where the population is too huge. That means the demand expectation will also be huge. If the population of the country is less, then the demanding capacity can also be less. So based on the volume of population, even we think about the demand volume. So that's the reason more populated country, there is high chances of more demand. Less populated country, there will be a less demand for a goods and services. Next point number complementary end uh, your favorite point those goods which are consumed together those goods which are are called as bike and petrol pen and refill we are going to use it together they are called as complementary substitute goods rather than coffee i want tea if dairy milk is not there kit kat or gone mad it is a next best alternative what is it which gives dash level of satisfaction. Same level of satisfaction. That is called as substitute goods. What is complementary? Those goods which are consumed together. They are called as complementary goods. Clear? And here I also explained you one more important shortcut. Complementary goods are dash related. Negatively. Substitute goods are dash related. What is the shortcut? Uh, why, what is the shortcut? Shashi Kiran, sir. Aha. Who taught you economics? Shashi Kiran. First alphabet. Substitute good, first alphabet. Both are? A self-advertisement. Uh, this is a shortcut to remember because in the exam, many times our students will go wrong in this point. Complementary goods are negatively related. What do you mean by that? Let's take up an example. Tea and coffee. Suppose, if coffee prices are increasing automatically rather than preferring coffee people will start demanding for tea that means demand is increasing for suppose if coffee prices are decreasing if price of coffee decreases automatically people will prefer coffee only rather than going for so demand for tea will decrease this is in case of which good and arrow marks are in same direction so they are so, complementary goods, bike and petrol. Suppose, if petrol prices are increasing, then automatically the people who are planning to buy the bike, automatically they will not think of buying it. Demand for bike will decrease. If petrol prices are decreasing, then automatically demand for bikes will increase. So, this is called as complementary goods and they are dash related negatively related substitute goods are positively related complementary goods are negatively related clear so this is what pit cat pc p stands for price i stands for t stands for c fifth one sixth one seventh one c and s complementary and Substitute goods. Clear? So after that, we started discussing about 
law of demand so what is this law of demand according to a citrus paribus all things remains that is in pitcat pc everything else is remaining constant only and only price will change that means itcatr fixed only and only prices variable factor if price increases demand will decrease if price decreases demand will arrow marks are in different direction that is what i said they are negatively related or indirectly related that itself was a mean thumb rule of a demand chapter when price increases demand decreases price decreases demand increases that is what is law of demand all things remains constant when price changes demand will change that change can be either increase or decrease and i also made one beautiful statement here law of demand will only show us a direction of change law of demand will as a direction of change that means which way the prices are increasing or let me say which way the prices are changing because of that how is demand changing if price increase demand will decrease like this it is only going to show us a direction of change it will only show us a but it will never say us how much price is changing how much demand is changing so law of demand will only show us a direction of change and it is called as a qualitative statement what is it law of demand will only show us a direction of change hence forth it is called as a qualitative statement clear understood so this was the concept of law of now comes the most important topic what is it exceptions to law of demand if you remember i said when i was explaining about price there are few area which area there we have a positive relationship in most of the cases there is a negative relationship only and only in few circumstances we have got a positive relationship now let us discuss which are those few circumstances where we have got a positive relationship in a demand concept rather than having a negative relationship point number 1 conspicuous conspicuous refers to what prestigious or luxurious prestigious or that means when we are having a consumption of a prestigious or a luxurious goods law of demand will not work say assuming you already have one super bike or maybe a super car suppose if you want to buy one more will you say eh, no i already have one i don't want another one definitely no suppose you already have a gold chain suppose if your mom says okay let's buy one more gold chain will you say eh, no no already i have one will you definitely no in case of a luxurious consumption or a conspicuous consumption law of demand will not work law of demand will even though if the prices are increasing still people will demand it more and more because listen to this very carefully in case of conspicuous consumption people considers utility is derived whenever prices are increasing whenever prices are that means when prices are increasing more and more they feel okay it will give even more utility it will give even more like saundarya suppose if 2 crore is a prices of rolls royce if it becomes 2.5 crore even more good features have been added i think even more very superb duper car i want same 2.5 crore car only so like this when the prices are increasing people feel that it will create even more utility even more utility see there a commodity where it refers to the prestigious or luxurious goods where consumer measures the utility of a commodity by its if the commodity is expensive they think they are going to get more and more utility gold price diamond price that is what they consider conspicuous consumption luxurious consumption or prestigious consumption clear next comes point number the most important topic what is it what is this given good puma puma example biryani rice normal rice example already i have given this uh, adidas abibas all such things now say i wanted to buy a puma t-shirt i went to a showroom i saw a t-shirt where as a indian mentality what do i do next price tag now after looking into the t-shirt a very nice t-shirt which i liked it price tag is speaking sir rupees 2000 only what is it sir yav stupid fellow will pay 2000 rupees for one single t-shirt which stupid will pay sir 2000 rupees for one single t-shirt no now shashikiran will go to a normal shop where he buys on a regular basis a local shop luckily i found same t-shirt in that local store the only difference is instead of p u m a puma it is written as p o m a puma 
rest everything is same except spelling now the puma t-shirt is 200 puma t-shirt is original puma is which one will i buy now 200 rupees puma okay chalo i enjoyed the t-shirt i wanted to buy one more i wanted to buy next month i went to the same shop now this time rascal fellow shopkeeper has increased the prices of puma from 200 to 300 now 300 rupees is a price of a puma t-shirt original one puma duplicate puma has become yeah. even though in spite of increase in price of a low quality goods increase in price of a i still purchasing that puma only that is what even though if price increases demand for a low quality good is increasing clear next i also give that biryani rice and normal rice do you like biryani yak sar belag belage biryani as heltira our mouth is becoming watery okay now in biryani which kind of rice do they use basmati rice or normal rice superior kind of a rice basmati rice in your home day to day life your parents do they use basmati rice so the normal one which we get on a day to day basis the normal rice we are using comparing to basmati rice this normal rice is inferior that means low quality on which our parents are spending major part of their income so these are the two conditions to be called as given goods number one it should be a inferior good that means it should be a low quality goods on which customer needs to spend major part of their income so major part of the income is sold on such inferior goods then only it is called as giffen's goods then only it is called as what clear so two conditions are there condition number one it should be a inferior good condition number two major part of income is spent on inferior goods clear puma and puma example if you remember i also gave one more clear cut distinction by putting like a box like this this is where examination questions was asked normal goods and inferior goods what is this inferior goods called as low quality goods with respect to price and with respect to income so pit cat pc already we have discussed the relationship between price and demand negatively related that means when price increases demand when price decreases demand clear and income second logic also we have done whenever income increases demand will whenever income decreases demand will clear and just now we have also discussed about giffen's goods that is inferior goods suppose if the price of a low quality good is increasing puma t-shirt 200 to 300 we are still demanding for a puma that is demand is also increasing suppose if the price of such low quality good decreases subsequent month i wanted to buy one more now the prices are 100 not 300 i know it is low quality low quality prices are even more decreasing it will be bakwas quality not just low quality now will i buy that hey, no no shopkeeper don't show me this 100 rupees show me something similar to 200 or 300 one it is already a low quality such prices are even more decreasing no i don't want to buy that so when prices are decreasing even demand for such low quality will now comes kahani my twist suppose from 15000 salary now shashikiran salary increases to 20000 now which t-shirt will i buy puma duplicate one or at least once i will try with puma original one puma sir original one your salary has increased now you can afford it when income increases demand for low quality goods that puma demand decreased next subsequent month covid started lockdown happened only half salary not twenty thousand. now i'm getting only when income decreased now which t-shirt puma or puma again poma that means when income decreases demand for low quality will this is what is the most important point this is where examination question comes this is the place you people will go wrong whenever income increases demand for a normal good will increase but when income increases demand for low quality good will so the relationship between income and inferior good is dash related negatively related the relationship between income and normal good is dash related positively related clear so this is what the most important point of the chapter is understood
So what do you mean by Giffen's goods? Giffen's goods are low quality goods on which customer spends large part of their income, major part of their. Okay, now let us understand the snob effect and Veblen effect. So what is the snob? Remember, especially this example used to suit more for boys. So sir, L order KTM bike or Royal Enfield bike. Wherever you look around, now the KTM and Royal Enfield bike has become like auto rickshaw sir. So a few people, they don't want to buy that bike only. Or even though if they have, they don't want to ride it for more number of time, they will sell it off. So when a product is becoming common, when a product is becoming amongst all, some people decreases its consumption or altogether. This is called as snob effect. This is called as when a product becomes common. When a product becomes either they will decrease the consumption or either altogether they will stop the consumption. That is snob. So what is Weblen? Weblen is as simple as conspicuous. Even though if the prices are increasing, I still need the same goods and services because it is my status, it is my prestige. It is my luxuriousness. I don't want to go for any alternative good. I want the same commodity only. That is called as conspicuous consumption, where the utility of a product is derived by the prices of a particular commodity. Even in case of Weblen, see there, highly priced goods are consumed by rich people to satisfy their conspicuous. So remember, three kinds of effects are there. Weblen effect, low quality goods. Ah, high quality goods, ah, luxurious goods. Weblen is luxurious good. That is nothing but conspicuous consumption. Second one is snob effect. When a product becomes common, either they will decrease it or they will stop consuming it altogether. Third one, Giffen effect. Low quality goods on which customer spends dash part of their income. Major part of their. So these are the three kinds of effects. Weblen effect, snob effect, Giffen effect. These three things we need to be careful, especially with respect to Giffen effect. Income and inferior goods, we have to be little more careful. Clear? So that was the first two points under exception to law of demand. Point number one. Point number two. Point number three. Conspicuous necessaries. Conspicuous. When a product is used by your siblings. And when you don't have it in your childhood, one fight will happen at home. You know, you want same commodity. I want same chocolate. I want same color dress only. Especially when you have brother and sister. If they have got some particular XYZ commodity, when you don't have it, when you start yelling at the other sibling, and when you start crying in front of your parents, why? I want same thing. I want same thing. I also want the same thing. That is what? A demand for a product is determined by the usage of other person. By the... Sir, my friend bought one watch, sir. That was actually good. Huh? Even I am thinking to buy the same watch. Sir, I watched this movie, sir. That actress was wearing that beautiful gown. Or that actor was wearing that beautiful jacket. Next time when I go for a shopping, I want same kind of a cloth. Have you done it? Definitely, yes. If not with siblings, same chocolate. Same watch. Oh, I also need same thing. Yeah, definitely, you would have done it. That is what we call it as conspicuous. Necessaries that is also called as demonstration effect or bandwagon effect, wherein the demand for a product is determined by the usage of others. Another best example cell phone, sir. My friend bought this iPhone 11, sir. That is actually pretty good. Even I am thinking to buy the same. That is what happens. So, usually, as a human tendency, we get attracted by looking into someone else's usage. That is called as bandwagon effect or demonstration. Effect. Next point number four, the most important amongst all, expectation of. Best example, your mom. When festivals are coming up, when the prices on a festival days are very high, your mom starts, let me say, she will stop purchase, sorry, starts purchasing three days in advance. All vegetables, flowers, fruits, because on the festival day, prices will be. I, it will be very more. I don't want to purchase on a festival day. I know that in a future, prices are going to change. Prices are going to increase. So automatically, demand starts increasing. So that is what? Expectation of future change in price. Next year or next month or next week, I know that prices are going to increase. Automatically, demand will also start increasing from now itself. It is completely opposite to the law of demand. If prices are increasing, demand should decrease. 
but in case of few circumstances where we can expect that the prices are going to increase in future automatically such demand will increase from the present moment itself clear so that is point number 4 expectation of future increase in price point number 5 in case of uh, that highway foods in the uh, let me say uh, food articles in highway that was the one best example you are traveling by road you have stopped your vehicle in one of the shops over there in the highway 20 rupee chips packet you will charge 25 10 rupee water bottle you will charge 12 rupee even though in spite of increase in price you people are still demanding because that that is an emergency to me i need this water bottle except this shop in next 30 kilometers or 50 kilometers there is no other shop another best example during the time of covid that ram deceive your medicine that was a life-saving drug even though people are demanding it to the more and more extent the prices are also increasing it so that is what at the time of emergency at the time of law of demand will not work there will be exceptions to law of demand point number six cricket bat Roy sharma scored double century i want to sell this bat one crore three crore five crore like this prices are also increasing demand for this bat is also so in case of speculation activity law of demand will not work law of demand will not work even though if prices are increasing demand will still increase last but not the least present trends in normal jeans pants 750 rupees no one will buy tear that and give it 1500 rupees everyone will buy Don jeans are present trends are fashion so in case of present trends and fashion even though if prices are increasing demand will increase clear and point number seven i will ex explain it later later part of the class basic necessaries of life whether price increase whether price decrease demand is already existing demand will be there especially the basic necessaries of life food clothing and shelter it doesn't matter if salt price increases or decreases we still consume same quantity of salt oh salt price decrease let's eat more salt will you eat it definitely no that is how so in case of basic necessaries of life whether the prices are changing or the prices are not changing demand will be always there demand will be existing so even that comes under exception to the law of demand so in general cases law of demand is negatively related but in these eight circumstances law of demand will be positively related that is why we call this as exception to law of demand what is it first one conspicuous point number two given point number three point number four expectation of future change in point number five point number six Point number seven, point number eight, present trends in clear. So these are the concepts which we just studied about meaning of demand, determinants of demand, law of demand and exceptions to law of demand. So four topics we have finished clear. So let's continue with the next topic that is demand schedule and demand. So when we represent demand in a form of a table, in a form of a that is called as demand schedule. Say that I have got three customers. Shashikiran is a chocolate seller. Shashikiran is a. Now, because of consuming my chocolate, there are few people who got a superpowers. Who are those? Batman, Superman, Iron Man. Now, say my chocolate price is rupees 10. Batman is purchasing 22, Superman 15, Iron Man 18. All of them, all the three put together in the market, they are purchasing. Like Batman, Superman and Iron Man, there are still more customers who would like to buy my product in the market, but I am only restricting myself in an example for three customers. So, if at all, I consider the demand created by the individual customer because of change in price. See there. Now, say I am decreasing the prices, decreasing the from 10 to 8. As we all know, when price decreases, demand increases from 22 now batman has increased the demand to 27 like that i'm decreasing the prices he is increasing the demand like this if i consider only one individual customer's demand due to change in that is called as individual demand schedule what is it called as it represents demand created by the individual customers due to change in price now rather than con considering only individual customer like only batman only superman and only i am man now, suppose if I consider the total demand created by all the customers in the market due to change in price, that is called as market demand schedule. What is it called as? 
see there it represents demand created by all the customers in the market due to change in so in short whenever we represent demand in a form of a table in a form of a that is called as demand schedule that is called as demand next demand curve suppose when we represent demand in the form of a graph in the form of a representing the table that schedule in the form of a graph is called as demand curve already we have explained about it what is the general nature of demand curve downward sloping linear curve from left to toe. right let us draw the demand curve So, what does y axis represents? What does x axis represents? So, what is the general nature of demand curve? Downward sloping from, so downward sloping linear curve from left to toe. Right, say this is the initial price line and this is the initial quantity. This is price, this is quantity. Already we know that whenever price increases demand, when price decreases demand, so this is the main thumb rule of a demand chapter, accepted. Let's say now prices are increasing, prices are quantity demanded will decrease. Now say prices are decreasing, prices are quantity demanded will increase clear so this is p this is q let me say this is p2 prices are decreasing so that quantity is increasing q2 so this is p1 prices are increasing quantity demanded is decreasing q1 so y axis represent price x axis represents quantity what is the nature of demand curve demand curve is a downward sloping linear curve from left to toe right clear so why is it downward sloping linear curve from left to right there are five important reasons how many important reasons point number one because of ldmu law of diminishing marginal utility when we keep on consuming a same commodity over and above over and above our satisfaction will keep on decreasing after every consumption your favorite sweet say jamun if you keep on consuming jamun continuously one after the other one after the other can you consume 20 30 jamun just like that sir after a point let me say after consuming some five six jamuns i feel like okay enough i don't want any more if i eat i will paka feel like puking it so i don't want to consume it so a particular commodity when we keep on consuming it looks like satisfaction is increasing but in reality it is decreasing that is one of the reason it is downward sloping second one substitution effect if dairy milk is not there kit kat if kit kat is not there gone mad one commodity's demand is increasing another commodity's demand is decreasing like this because of substitution effect availability of substitute it is downward sloping third one when income changes automatically demand for a commodity will also change income represents purchasing capacity when the purchasing capacity changes automatically demand will vary even because of New customers, there are few customers who would love to try, uh, try our commodity. They will give a try. If they like it, they will continue. If they don't like it, they will discontinue. And last but not the least, alternative or first example, newspaper. So today morning it is newspaper. From tomorrow it is substitute of tissue paper. For each and every cleaning purpose at home, we use newspaper, old newspaper only. Same commodity is multiply used or alternatively used for various purposes. Even because of these things, demand curve is downward sloping from left to two, right what are the five important reasons for a downward sloping demand curve number one ldmu number two substitute effect third one income effect number four new customers last but not the least alternative or multiple uses clear so what do you mean by demand schedule representing demand in a form of a table is called as demand schedule what is demand curve representing demand in the form of a graph is called as demand Curve. There are two types, individual demand schedule or individual demand curve, market demand schedule or market demand curve. Clear? Now let us enter to the main important topic of a demand chapter that is elasticity of. So we also discussed about law of demand just few minutes ago. What is law of demand? 
all things remains constant when price increases demand decreases when price decreases demand that means every other elements remains constant in pit at pc only price will change other things are remaining here also same only price will change other things are also remaining but the difference is in law of demand it was only showing us a direction of change it was only showing us a hence it was called as but it never said how much demand will change or how much price will change so that is the reason why elasticity concept was introduced in order to overcome the disadvantage of law of demand now it is not just showing the direction of change along with direction elasticity of demand will show us a numerical change or a percentage change numerical change or a suppose if price increases by 10 percentage how much percentage will demand decrease that is what it is going to show us now so it will show us a numerical change or percentage change along with direction of change that is called as qualitative statement so these are the differences between law of demand and elasticity of demand remember law of demand will only show us a direction of change elasticity of demand will show us a percentage or numerical change along with direction of change law of demand qualitative elasticity of demand quantitative clear now see the meaning of elasticity of demand it is a responsiveness or a change in quantity demanded due to change in which are the determinants of demand pit cat pcs price income tax climatic condition advertisement test and preferences population complementary and substitute goods so out of this pit cat pc some determinants not all the determinants which determinants which are those some determinants number one number two number three complementary and substitutes put together we call it as cross number four these are those some determinants because of which the demand for a commodity is changing now we call it as elasticity of demand and these four some determinants is called as types of elasticity of demand so how many types are there four types of elasticity of demand is there which are those four types number one price elasticity of demand number two income elasticity of demand number three cross elasticity of demand number four advertisement elasticity of demand clear and you have to observe one more important thing here see the formula percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in but in the meaning when we were explaining about the elasticity we spoke about some determinants but in formula straight away we write it as price why what is that one important factor price affects demand to a maximum extent so straight away rather than writing some determinants in a formula we write it as price clear so in the meaning we write that word called as some determinants because of some determinants there will be a changes in demand but while writing the formula straight away we write it as price percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price that is the formula of elasticity of demand but the meaning says due to change in some determinants due to change in clear how many types of elasticity of demand which are the four types price elasticity income elasticity cross elasticity advertisement elasticity clear what is the meaning of elasticity of demand it is a responsiveness or a change in quantity demanded due to change in some determinants why was the concept of elasticity introduced because of disadvantage of law of demand what is the disadvantage of law of demand it will only show us the direction of change but elasticity along with direction it will also show us a numerical change or percentage change so law of demand is qualitative statement elasticity of demand is clear with this let's enter the first type of elasticity of demand that is now meaning remains the same it is a responsiveness or change in quantity demanded due to change in due to change in price of a commodity see the formula even formula remains same instead of elasticity of demand now we will write it as price elasticity of demand clear percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price and how many types of price elasticity is there 
नंबर वन रिलेटिवली एलास्टिक नंबर टू रिलेटिवली इन एलास्टिक नंबर थ्री नंबर फोर परफेक्टली इन एलास्टिक नंबर फाइव सो रिलेटिवली एलास्टिक न्यूमरिकल वैल्यू इज ग्रेटर देन वन ग्रेटर देन relatively inelastic numerical value is lesser than 1 unitary elastic equal to 1 perfectly inelastic perfectly elastic in class i explained you you have to always remember in the same format because there are numerical values there are also some other concepts you need to remember there relatively elastic greater than 1 relatively inelastic lesser than 1 unitary elastic equal to 1 perfectly inelastic equal to 0 perfectly elastic equal to infinite clear and we also discussed in detail about this so let us do it for the very first one and for the second one we will just go with the revision phase what is the very first type of price elasticity relatively elastic where e is greater than 1 what was the meaning of relatively elastic a small change in leads to a large change in quantity demanded so price only changes by small extent but the quantity changes by large extent so what is the general nature of demand curve downward sloping linear curve from left to toe so it will be like a 45 degree curve like this 45 degree downward sloping curve from left to toe right accepted now it will not be a general nature and relatively elastic but it will be a flatter curve downward sloping it is not 45 degree it will be even more flatter kind of a slipping curve kind of a sleeping curve so this is how the demand curve looks like it will be a flatter demand curve what will be the demand curve flatter demand curve so assuming this is the initial price and this is the initial quantity p and q so what does the meaning says a small change in price leads to a now observe price is increasing because of that quantity is decreasing p1 now observe say price is increasing by 10 percentage how many percentage no doubt when price increases quantity demanded is decreasing now it is decreasing greater than 10 percentage say 20 percentage decrease in quantity demanded so that is what we call it as small change in price price only increased by 10 percentage but demand has decreased by 20 percentage smaller change in price larger change in quantity demanded hence forth relatively elastic is also called as more proportionate change what proportionate change that means reaction is more because of small changes in price reaction in demand is more so it is also called as dash proportionate change more proportionate change and we also discuss there is a formula to solve what was the formula p by into change in quantity by change in price what does the word p stands for p will be earlier price initial price or original price or earlier price what is q earlier quantity so this is p and this is so what is change in quantity difference between new and old quantity difference between new and old quantity what is change in price difference between new and old price new and 
Okay, let's give a numerical problem here. If you remember, I used to give a numerical problems in the class. Suppose if Shashi Karan is a chocolate seller, he sells the chocolate for rupees 10. He sells the chocolate for? And he sells 100 chocolates in a day. Now, he has changed the prices from rupees 10 to rupees 5. As I have taken increase in price and graph, let's take decrease in price in numerical problem. Because of decrease in prices of a chocolate, the demand has increased to 170 chocolates per day. Initial price was 10, initial demand was 100. New price is 5, new demand is 170. Identify which type of price elasticity is the same. So, what is the value of P? P is 10. Q is what is change in quantity? That is 170 minus 100. Difference between new and old. Next, new price is 5. Old price is 10. So, this brings up to 10 by 100 into 70 divided by minus 5. And I asked you to ignore negative. For a time being, ignore negative. Don't consider negative. If at all we ignore negative, this will be 10 ones are 10. 10s are 5s are 5, 14s are. So, this is as simple as 14 divided by 10. Answer is 1 point. 1.4. Is it greater than 1 or lesser than 1? If it is greater than 1, if E is greater than 1, then which type of elasticity is the same? Relatively elastic. Like this, the numerical problems will be given in the exam by solving the problem. If the answer is greater than 1, relatively elastic. Suppose if the answer is lesser than 1, relatively inelastic. If the answer is equal to 1, unitary elastic, equal to 0, perfectly inelastic. And what was the nature of demand curve in relatively elastic? Flatter demand curve. In case of relatively inelastic, steeper demand curve. It will be steeper. And relatively elastic is more proportionate change. Relatively inelastic is less proportionate change. Now, have a look. We discussed about this flatter demand curve. Now, this is how the second one, relatively inelastic, complete opposite to elastic, relatively elastic. Over there, large change, sorry, small change in price. See there, small change in price, large change in quantity. Here, complete reverse. Large change in price, small change in. So, this is how the graph will be. It will not be downward sloping linear curve. It will be downward sloping flatter curve. Ah, downward sloping steeper curve. steeper curve. Price quantity. Now say that prices are increasing by large extent, but quantity will decrease only and only by. Can you observe here? Price is increasing more, quantity is decreasing less. The nature of demand curve is steeper. Curve and E is lesser than 1. Now, greater reaction is there or lesser reaction is there? Lesser reaction. Greater change in price, lesser reaction in quantity. So, that's the reason relatively inelastic is also called as less proportionate change. Dash proportionate change? Less proportionate change. Clear? Relatively elastic is more proportionate change. Relatively inelastic is? And next comes unitary, same proportionate change. What is it? If price changes by 10 percentage, even demand will also change by same 10 percentage. So, whatever may be the change in price, quantity demanded also changes in the general nature of demand curve. That is downward sloping linear curve from left to that will be the nature of demand curve here. If price increases by 10 percentage, demand decreases by same 10 percentage and this concept is also called as dash rectangular. Uh, in this graph, it is not clearly visible. Let us draw the graph properly and show it to you why it is called as rectangular hyperbola.
प्राइस क्वांटिटी दिस इज डिमांड कर्व वाई एक्सेस एक्स एक्सेस सो दिस विल बी पी वन इंक्रीज इन प्राइस सो डिक्रीज इन क्वांटिटी क्यू वन नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर शेडेड रीजन सो दिस लुक्स इक्वल डिस्टेंस रेक्टेंगल इक्वल डिस्टेंस दैट मींस दिस विड्थ दिस विड्थ इज इक्वली डिस्टेंटेड सो दैट्स द रीजन दिस इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एस rectangular hyper or this also got one more name equilateral hyperbola rectangular hyperbola or equilateral hyperbola clear so unitary elastic is dash proportionate change same proportionate change relatively inelastic is less proportionate change relatively elastic is more proportionate change clear the nature of demand curve in relatively elastic is flatter relatively inelastic steeper unitary elastic downward sloping linear curve from left to right rectangular hyperbola or equilateral hyperbola fourth one perfectly inelastic perfectly whatever may be the change in price quantity demanded remains unchanged that means this is y axis whether price increase whether price decrease quantity remains unchanged the demand curve is dash to the origin vertical demand curve or parallel to y axis clear and in this particular condition all basic necessities of life basic all basic necessities of as well as perishable goods will come into the picture salt example basic necessities of life food clothing shelter even though if salt price increases or decreases we consume same quantity of salt we don't change the quantity of salt clear so all basic necessities of life will come under perfectly inelastic and e will be equal to zero nature of demand curve is Vertical demand curve or parallel to y-axis. Vertical demand curve or parallel to clear, understood. So this is perfectly inelastic. Last but not the least, perfectly elastic. elastic. This concept is unrealistic, or this is myth. This concept is not a realistic one, wherein they say whether price increase or whether price decrease, it doesn't matter. Quantity demanded is undetermined. that means we can't even estimate what is the quantity demanded by the customer or else this is the one meaning second meaning says whatever may be the changes in price or whatever is a price level whether price is increasing or whether price is decreasing we can't even know what is the quantity we can't even know what is the quantity so that is what is perfectly elastic highly impossible there is no real life example here where we can't even estimate how much goods and services are demanded by the customer so that's the reason we took it at last and the nature of graph is horizontal or parallel to x axis clear so these are the five types of price elasticity of demand first one relatively elastic e greater than 1 nature of demand curve flatter and it is also called as more proportionate change second one relatively e is lesser than steeper demand curve or less proportionate change third one unitary elastic e equal to 1 downward sloping linear curve or rectangular hyperbola same proportionate change fourth one perfectly inelastic e equals vertical demand curve or parallel to y axis all basic necessities of life and perishable goods come as under this last but not the least the elastic e equals infinite horizontal demand curve or parallel to x axis clear understood so these are the five types of price elasticity so how many types of elasticity of demand is there four types which are those four types price income cross and advertisement out of that the very first one is price under price elasticity how many types five types now let us understand measurements of price elasticity of demand 
that means how all we can identify price elasticity which type is that is it relatively elastic relatively inelastic unitary or perfectly inelastic or perfectly elastic number one is formula method already we have understood p by q into change in quantity by change in price number two is arc method number two is arc method formula is change in quantity divided by change in price into p1 plus p2 divided by q1 plus q2 if you remember i explained it in detail in the class due to the disadvantages of formula method due to the disadvantages of we have introduced arc method so what is the disadvantage of formula method let us also identify it once again solve this problem under formula method and let me know the answer okay 15 70 What is the formula method? Formula P by into change in quantity by change in. So solve it under formula method and let me know the answer for the problem number one. What is the answer? 0.6 what is p 10 what is q 100 into change in quantity 30 negative symbol you have to ignore it as of now next 5 this is as well as 10 ones are 10 tens are 5 ones are 5 6 are 6 by 10 the answer is 0. 0.6 greater than 1 or lesser than 1 if it is lesser than 1 which type of elasticity relatively in elastic now solve the second problem and let me know the answer so what is the value of p 15 q 70 into change in quantity 30 change in price 5 so 5 ones are 5 3s are 3 into 30 is 90 divided by 70 as simple as 9 by 7 answer is 1. So if it is 1.2 greater than 1 or lesser than 1 if it is greater than 1 relatively now observe the problems carefully we didn't make any big changes here whatever the problem one is there we have just reversed the problem we have just reversed the problem and have given it as problem number 2 when we reverse a problem we end up getting a different answer first it was relatively inelastic next time it is relatively so this is the disadvantage of formula method in order to overcome this disadvantage we have introduced arc method we have introduced which method now the arc method formula says change in quantity divided by change in into price 1 plus price 2 that means earlier price plus new price divided by earlier quantity plus new quantity let me solve the first problem have a look change in quantity 30 change in price 5 earlier price 10 new price 15 earlier quantity 100 new quantity this is as simple as 30 divided by 5 into 25 divided by 170 5 ones are 5 5s are 3 into 5 is 150 150 divided by 170 answer is 0.88 recurring clear so answer is lesser than 1 that is e is lesser than relatively in elastic so this is the formula of which method now kindly solve the second problem under arc method formula is change in quantity by change in price into p1 plus p2 divided by q1 plus q2 so kindly solve the second problem and let me know the answer the answer is same the answer will be 0 point see that's the reason whether we reverse a problem in case of arc method in case of arc method we end up getting the same answer clear now listen to this very carefully suppose in an exam if a numerical problem is given if a numerical problem is and they have not specified which method to use will you use formula method or arc method 
first we have to use a formula method whatever answers you get in a formula method if the answers are not matching with the given options then we have to solve it under then answers will match sir what if both the method answers are given arc method answer should be considered sir andre if nothing is specified for a safer side we have to solve it in both the methods we have to solve it in so if both the method answers are there then we should consider which method answer arc method answer should be considered clear so this was the second method to identify the price elasticity first one is arc method sorry first one is formula method second one is arc method next third one point method this is also myth this concept is also unrealistic in nature what does it say this is use it to identify extremely small changes in demand if you remember i gave this example assumption if shashi kiran has got a rolls royce car which is of just to 2 crore assumption pa i don't have rolls royce and all just assumption i have given it for a service and the cost of replacing some particular spare part is just rupees 10 rupees 2 crore rupee car repair charges is rupees extremely small changes so in order to identify such extremely small changes they said we will use which method but this concept is actually myth unrealistic in nature but the graph has got a realistic explanation again that gets interconnected in chapter 4 so what was the formula in point method lower segment on the demand curve divided by upper segment on the demand curve if you remember we have plotted a demand curve and if you observe very carefully especially in perfectly inelastic perfectly so what was the nature of graph perfectly inelastic idiot fellows ah it is parallel to which axis y axis it is vertical demand curve what is it vertical and from where is the demand curve starting it is starting from x axis it is starting from and last but not the least perfectly elastic the demand curve was starting from y axis clear that means i will look here if the demand curve is touching the y axis if the demand curve is touching the that is perfectly elastic perfectly if demand curve is touching the x axis then it is perfectly the middle point of the demand curve is always unitary elastic middle point is upper portion is relatively elastic lower portion is relatively inelastic sir how do you say that what's the proof okay remember the region between let me say a and b i'm giving every individual points a name a b c d e and the distance between a and b is a segment like this totally there are how many segments four segments now what does the formula say lower segment divided by upper segment okay let's consider point c point c at point c how many lower segments are there how many upper segments are there 2 by 2 if the end answer is 1 which type of elasticity is that that is the reason i said middle point of the demand curve is dash elastic unitary elastic clear okay let me consider point b at point b how many lower segment how many upper segment 3 by 1 3 greater than 1 or lesser than 1 if it is greater than 1 which type of elasticity relatively elastic next let me consider point d at point d how many lower segments how many upper segments 1 by 3 if it is 0.3 greater than 1 or lesser than 1 if it is lesser than 1 which type of elasticity okay let's take point e at last one how many lower segments how many upper segments take out calculator zero by any numerical is but any numerical divided by zero at point a four lower segments zero upper segment any numerical divided by zero is a math error you will get as e in your calculator this is nothing but infinite clear so point a is infinite that is where it starts from y axis if the demand curve touches y axis then the graph was horizontal graph was horizontal if the graph is starting from x axis the graph was vertical clear if it is horizontal perfectly elastic if it is vertical perfectly inelastic the middle point of the demand curve is 
unitary elastic upper portion relatively elastic lower portion relatively inelastic clear understood so this graph is more important again this has got a connection with chapter 4 unit 3 monopoly we have done there there is an interconnection with this particular graph clear so let's go to the fourth method which is the fourth method total outlay method in this chapter if you remember when we kept on discussing about the topic we also understood a thumb rule what was a thumb rule whenever price increases demand whenever price decreases demand that means our primary focus was price secondary focus was demand because of change in price what will be the change in demand yes that was the logic but only and only in total outlay method rather than giving focus on price and demand now we will give the focus on price and spending capacity price and rather than giving focus on what quantity demanded now we are giving a focus on what spending capacity that means how much are customers ready to spend on my commodity are they ready to spend more money on my commodity or less money on my commodity is what we are interested that concept is called as outlay what is it called as outlay so this outlay is nothing but price into quantity price into so how much are the customers ready to spend whenever there is a change in price whenever there is a let me take my very old example i have three customers superheroes as my customers of chocolate who are those batman iron man and superman now see there i am decreasing the prices of my chocolate from six to five from five to six to five five to six to five five to definitely when prices are decreasing individual customers demand will increase see from 10 batman is increasing to 15 20 superman from 10 12 15 iron man 10 11 and but in this topic i said i am not interested in the demand i am only interested in spending capacity that is nothing but outlay what is the formula of outlay price into quantity so 6 into 10 5 into 15 4 into 20 Amma, it's not 420 it is 4 into 20 is 80 not 420 next to 6 into 10 5 into 12, 4 into 15, 6 into 10, 5 into 11, 4 into 13. Observe carefully, Iron Man, whenever prices are decreasing, whenever prices are, he is spending more and more money on my commodity, his spending capacity is increasing. So, it is relatively elastic, E is greater than 1. And observe there, price and outlay are in different direction. If price decreases, outlay increases so it is dash related negatively related so the relationship between price and outlay is dash related negatively related next see there superman prices are decreasing but the spending capacity is same so it is unitary elastic iron man if prices are decreasing rascal fellow even he is also decreasing his spending capacity first it was 60 rupee next it became 55 next it became 50 Two. that means arrow marks are in same direction and spending capacity is decreasing if spending capacity is decreasing that is relatively inelastic and the relationship between price and outlay is so the most important question in exam comes from relationship between price and outlay what is it relationship between price and outlay just now we have discussed what is it if it is e greater than one if it is e dash relation that means if prices are increasing prices are outlay is decreasing remember outlay is also called as total revenue what is it even total revenue tr formula is p into q this is also called as what total revenue this is also called as outlay so i will mention it as tr here when price increases tr will when price decreases tr will this is in case of which type of elasticity relatively elastic e is negatively related suppose if e is lesser than one relatively inelastic there is a dash relationship that means when prices are increasing total revenue is also when prices are decreasing total revenue is also clear then comes last but not the least that is e is whether price increase or whether price TR is same. Clear? So, this is the relationship between price and outlay. Price and 
outlay in case of relatively elastic it has got negative relationship in case of relatively inelastic it has got this is how your ICA material will represent the same concept there is a relationship between price and outlay outlay is also called as what now see there did you understand anything elastic unitary inelastic price increase price decrease able to understand anything what is that in case of elastic there is a negative relationship in case of inelastic there was a here if prices are increasing inelastic negative relationship so tr should decrease here prices are increasing inelastic positive relationship even tr will increase here prices are decreasing in elastic there is a negative relationship tr should increase in case of inelastic there is a positive relationship if prices are decreasing tr is also but in unitary whether price increase or whether price decrease tr remains tr remains clear understood so these are the four methods how many methods of identifying price elasticity of demand so which are the four methods of identifying the price elasticity of demand number one formula method number two arc method number three point method number four total outlay method especially in total outlay method this last one relationship between price and outlay price and this is the most important topic clear understood so relationship between price and outlay is most important any doubts in this topics let's start so we are done with price elasticity now let's get started with income elasticity so whenever there is a change in price there was a change in quantity demanded so now whenever there is a change in income whenever there is a change in there is a changes in demand that is called as income elasticity same represented in the form of a numerical changes either in the form of percentage or any numerical values that is called as income elasticity of demand see there it is a change in demand due to change in income percentage change in demand divided by so already we have discussed in case of a given good there were two kinds of goods wait where is the table ah so number one in case of normal goods number two in case of in case of normal goods and income there was a positive relationship in case of inferior goods and income there is a negative relationship same whenever there is a positive relationship graph is going to be upward sloping straight line curve upward sloping now y axis is not representing price rather it represents income x axis quantity same to same when there is a positive relationship demand curve will be upward sloping linear curve from left to right when there is a negative relationship that means inferior goods then it is going to be a downward sloping linear curve from left to right so in case of a normal good there is a positive relationship in case of inferior good there is a negative relationship now measurements of income elasticity what is it measurements of we only have two methods formula method and arc method rather than p we will represent it as y that is income p is price y is income that means formula method remains the same rather than p we have to replace it with y y by q into change in quantity by change in income arc method change in quantity by change in income into y1 plus y2 divided by q1 plus q2 these are the two methods which we have formula method and arc method now from this methods when we are calculating if the answers are greater than one if the answers are that is luxury good which good in case of income elasticity if e is greater than one if e is that is called as which good luxury good next if e is lesser than one necessary goods are normal goods necessary goods are if e is equal to one if e is either luxury or necessary goods luxury or that means same proportionate change here what is happening there is a one more logic where you guys will go wrong listen to this carefully suppose our income has increased by 10 percentage income increased by 
now my spendings on a particular commodity has increased greater than 10 percentage from 15000 our salary has increased to 20 but my spendings have increased greater than 5000 5000 is a change in income 15 to 20 5000 is an increase in income because of increase in income definitely there will be increase in demand that means i am spending more than 5000 rupees that is in case of luxury good that is in case of suppose my income increased from 15000 to 20000 but my spending is not complete 5000 whatever changes in income happened lesser than 5000 lesser than that is normal good e greater than when more proportionate change already we have discussed this relatively elastic more proportionate relatively inelastic less proportionate same way whatever is a change in income if we are spending greater than change in income more proportionate spending more proportionate that will happen in case of luxury that will happen in case of suppose if it is less proportionate spending suppose if it is less proportionate spending normal goods if it is equal income also increased by 5000 my spending also increased by either it can be a normal goods or luxury goods it can be anyone either luxury or normal goods suppose this is the most important if e is equal to and there from 15000 salary has increased to 20000 from 15 salaries have been increased to but my spending still remains the same i am not even increasing 1 rupee in excess when I was getting 15,000 salary, my spending was 10,000. Even though when my salary is increasing from 15 to 20,000, still my spending is 10,000 only. My spendings have not increased even though when income is increased. That is what, see there, there is no change in quantity irrespective of change in income. Last but not the least, this is what is the most important one. If the answers are negative, if the answers are they are inferior goods. If you remember in price elasticity, I was asking you to ignore negative, ignore negative, ignore negative. Because when the answers are negative, it is considered as inferior goods. And every good cannot be inferior. While solving the problem in formula method without ignoring negative when we solve it, each and every problem we end up getting the answers in negative. We end up getting the answers in. So that is considered as inferior goods so every goods cannot be inferior goods that's the reason i asked you to ignore negative sir what if we have ignored negative in the answer say the first problem whatever you solved the answer was like 1.2 answer was like so we got the answer as 1.2 that too by ignoring negative we got a positive 1.2 suppose in the options are given like the 0 0.6 option b minus 0 0.6 option c 1.2 option d minus 1.2 both are given positive figure is also there negative figure is also there now which one should we consider negative figure because we have ignored negative we have if the corresponding negative figure is given then the answer will be such corresponding negative figures clear that's the reason i asked you to ignore negative if i explain that you will not understand at the very early stage. Suppose, instead of giving a numerical values like this, they have given answers like this. Option A, luxury goods. Option B, normal goods. Option C, both A and B. Both A and B. Option D, inferior goods answer is positive 1.2 by ignoring negative by ignoring now what is the answer inferior because we have ignored negative we have ignored suppose rather than giving inferior rather than giving suppose they have given neither a or b now what is the answer luxury goods clear now you understood how to deal with negative values so remember if the answers are negative which type of good is that inferior good if the answer is greater than one luxury good if the answer is lesser than one normal goods or necessary goods if the answer is equal to one or necessary goods if the e is equal to zero 
there is no change in quantity even though if there is a change in income if e is equal to negative inferior goods clear understood so this is what income elasticity next the third type of elasticity is cross elasticity where we consider complementary goods and substitute goods say we are considering good a and good b that means one good and another good one good and another good price elasticity meaning remains the same but we will consider two different goods here it is a responsiveness or change in quantity demanded of one good due to changes in price of another good so we are comparing one one goods demand another goods price and see the formula this formula is most important one percentage change in quantity demanded of one good divided by percentage change in price of another good substitute goods are dash related positively related if it is positively related graph is upward sloping straight line curve if negative relationship is there in case of complementary good then the graph is downward sloping linear curve from left to right now we will consider prices of one commodity say y axis now this is representing prices of coffee prices of if price of coffee increases rather than preferring coffee people will shift for tea that means quantity demanded for tea is increasing positive relationship if price of coffee increases demand for tea will increase now pen and refill suppose if the refill uh, let me say petrol and bike why instead of pen and refill petrol and bike if the prices of petrol if the prices of petrol is increasing then the demand for bike will decrease one product's price another product's demand that is what we are considering now clear so this is what is cross elasticity positive relationship applies in complementary good in such a case graph is upward sloping linear curve complementary goods are negatively related in such a case graph will be downward sloping linear curve and the formula for cross elasticity is percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price ah now we should consider one good with another good percentage change in price of good a divided by percentage change in price of good b clear like this we are comparing with the prices of one good and quantity demanded of another good understood so kindly solve this problem already we have done this in the class now anushka owns a coffee shop where she sells 100 coffees per day for rupees 10 each due to increase in price of raw material coffee prices have went up to rupees 12 due to which sales has dropped to 75 now quantity of coffee is decreasing because of increase in price of a coffee an opposite tea shop of mr kohli started receiving all of a sudden more customers where he sells a tea for rupees 10 each and the demand has increased from 400 to 500 cups so which quantity is changing now drastically tea because of change in prices of coffee now coffee price from 10 it increased to 12 because of the tea demand tea demand from 400 it has increased to only these two informations are important for us quantity of coffee is not important and price of tea is not important because of increase in price of coffee increase in price of there is a increase in demand for tea and we don't have formula method and arc method in cross elasticity we do not have formula and arc method in cross elasticity we have to straight away use a main formula we have to straight away use a which is that main formula percentage change in quantity demanded of good a divided by percentage change in price of good b now we have to convert that in the form of percentage we have to convert in the form of okay let's convert them into percentage see there coffee price from 10 it has increased to what is the change in price 2 rupee what was the initial price 10 into 100 2 by 10 into 100 how many percentage so prices have increased by 20 percentage demand 400 and 500 difference initial demand into 100 25 percentage is a change in demand so what does the formula says quantity demanded change divided by quantity price of another commodity that is in the form of percentage this is as simple as 25 percentage divided by 1 point answer is 1.25 ah there is no relatively elastic relatively inelastic here clear 
so don't get confused in cross elasticity only main formula is applicable that is straight away we have to convert that into percentage and we have to solve it so 1.25 is the answer and remember in cross elasticity there is one more twister if the end answer is zero if the end answer is they are unrelated goods they are they are unrelated goods kindly mark this down in cross elasticity if the answer is zero if the answer is zero they are unrelated goods if the answer is equal to 1 perfect substitute or perfect complementary if equal to 1 perfect substitute or perfect complementary done so this was the third type of elasticity that is cross elasticity of demand next the fourth type of elasticity is advertisement elasticity see there we don't have any graph only just an explanation and a formula here they say when we spend more money on advertisement when we spend more money on there is a high chances of getting more and more demand say i'm a chocolate seller i want to sell chocolates only in the region of maleshwaram that means i need to advertise only in maleshwaram if i need to sell my chocolates throughout the bangalore then i have to spend the advertisement for entire bangalore i need to create an awareness about my product across the bangalore city if I need to make sure that my entire nation has to know about my product, then the advertisement expenditure will be even more higher. That means when we spend more and more money, when the percentage of spendings on advertisement is more, that means the quantity demand will also be more. That is what they are saying. It is a responsiveness or changes in demand due to changes in spendings on advertisement. When we spend more and more money on advertisement, there is a more chances of getting higher demand clear this is what is advertisement elasticity dash elasticity advertisement elasticity clear understood so remember how many types of elasticity of demand is there four types which are those price income cross advertisement under price elasticity how many types relatively elastic relatively inelastic unitary elastic perfectly inelastic perfectly elastic clear understood Hello, let us go to the next topic, the most important topic of the chapter, that is expansion and contraction of demand. If you remember, we were discussing about a main thumb rule. What was the main thumb rule? When price increases, demand. When price decreases, demand. So, in order to make you people understand the concept in the most effective way, I was using the word increase and decrease, but that is not the real concept. Then what is the real concept? The concept is expansion in. Remember, in PitCat PCs, if only and only price changes, if only and only, that will lead to expansion or contraction. That will lead to, what is the general nature of demand curve? Downward sloping linear curve from left to right. Already we have discussed it. Now I am taking one more reference point as E along with P and Q. Now, whenever prices are increasing, prices are, I used to say demand decreases, but now the concept is demand contracts, demand. So, when price increases, demand will contract. So, how do I know whether it is expanding or contracting based on x-axis? If the quantity is coming nearing to the origin, nearing to the, if it is coming nearing to the origin, contraction, if it is going away from the origin, expansion now when prices are increasing demand is contracting suppose if prices are decreasing demand is so when price decrease demand will expand if price increase demand will contract and observe the reference point e this point e will either move for even or either it will move for so henceforth this is a movement on same demand curve expansion or contraction is what Movement on same demand curve. What is it? Movement on. Clear? So, see the reasons here. Expansion and contraction of demand curve. It is a changes in demand due to change in. Only and only due to change in. And except ITCAT PCs. ITCAT. 
everything else is remaining same only and only prices will change and expansion and contraction is also called as e will move for even or it will move for e2 so on a same demand curve there is a movement so expansion and contraction is called as movement on same demand curve if price increases demand will contract if price decrease demand will so what is the reason for expansion or contraction due to change in sir what if now price will not change other elements are going to change that is called as increase or decrease in demand curve now except price all the other factors will change in fitcat pc now price is going to remain constant it cat pcs everything else is going to change whenever other factors are changing when we say change other factor can increase or other factors can when other factors are increasing there is a movement or shift movement or shift shift this is the most important movement will only occur in expansion and contraction but increase and decrease will lead to a shift that means we will draw a new demand curve altogether when other factors are increasing when other factors are there is a right hand side shift observe we are plotting a new demand curve that orange color line towards the right hand side towards the which side now price is still remaining same prices are not at all changing see there price is still same only and only q to q1 there is a increase in quantity there is a so whenever other factors are increasing there is a dash, dash side shift and we are drawing a new demand curve altogether that means we are shifting the demand curve we are towards which side right hand side towards which side right hand side this is when other factors are increasing suppose when other factors are decreasing other factors are that shift will happen to the demand curve towards which side left hand side this black color line will shift to the left hand side so increase or decrease will lead to a shift increase or decrease will lead to a but expansion and contraction will lead to a movement on a same demand curve point e was either moving to even or e2 on a same demand curve but here the same demand curve will shift either to a left hand side or right hand side when will it shift to the right hand side when other factors are increasing when will it shift to the left hand side when other factors are decreasing what is the reason for increase or decrease in demand curve other factors except price so increase or decrease is also called as shift in demand curve when other factor increases except price right hand side shift when other factor decreases except price left hand side shift clear so these are the concepts of expansion and contraction and increase or decrease in demand curve clear so by this 95 percentage of your entire demand concept comes to an end and few repeated questions in exam observe this carefully again it is interconnected with chapter 4 which chapter outlay was also called as what total revenue outlay was also called as average revenue is also called as demand curve average revenue is also called as until now whatever topic that we have analyzed we have understood the topic from a consumer point of view whose point of view for a time being i will not explain this when i come to supply i will explain demand and supply both are flow concept both are i will explain that when i come to supply just another 15 20 minutes i will explain that clear now the last topic of the demand unit that is demand forecasting demand so this is the only topic in a demand unit which we will study from a producer point of view from whose point of view till now whatever topic that we have discussed we had discussed from a dash point of view so what is this forecasting that means predicting things what is it predicting things so what is this prediction a future demand we are predicting it that means a future probable demand future it can be or it cannot be so we are trying to predict what will be the demand in the future what will be the in the future so it is a scientific way of estimating demand what is it it is a scientific way of based on certain facts and 
events we are trying to forecast we are trying to that means we are trying to predict the probable demand for any goods and services on which day on the basis of certain past behavioral patterns so it can be accurate or it cannot be accurate now one usefulness of this future demand forecasting is we can plan things in a better way we can things in a better way who is that we that we is nothing but a business managers all this business managers can plan they can allocate a proper budget they can procure the raw material they can start producing things very well in advance only if they are able to predict the demand suppose sir ganesha festival is coming up last two years covid was there we didn't celebrate much but this year we are planning to sell 1000 ganesha idols yes that 1000 is your prediction in order to sell 1000 ganesha idols you need to first produce 1000 ganesha idols for that how much of raw material is required what kind of labor i should deploy when i should start producing from when it should be available to the customers each and every decision has to be taken care that means in short planning and decision making becomes more and more easy for a business manager when we predict things in advance and we are mass producing things and we should also produce things based on the demand based on the whatever my people are ready to buy suppose my people are ready to buy all green friendly ganesha without any chemicals without any paints but i am producing all that color color paint ganesha will they purchase i have to predict things very well in advance according to the demand i need to produce and by having a right information by having a i can also have a proper budgetary planning how much funds to be allocated for what purposes what all procurement has to be made and my intention of doing that is to control cost i should always produce at a least cost so in order to do so i need to have a proper information proper information and by having all proper information i can plan my production in advance by getting all the necessary resources my intention to make the planning proper is either i should use every resources in a most effective way if not i should preserve them if not i should this is what a sustainable development concept is i need to use the resources in the most effective way without wasting them and also preserve them and also in order to use it in the future that means at the present moment don't over produce or don't under produce things so we need to make sure that there is nothing called as unused capacity or idle resources we have to effectively utilize the goods and services or to produce goods and services so these are the usefulness these are the in short we can plan things in a proper way plan things in a so demand forecasting is used for a proper business planning proper and for what all types of forecast we will do there are two types of forecast number one macro level forecast number two time time based forecast what is this macro level it is further subclassified into industry level and i need to understand what is the demand for ca foundation classes in advait learning only that is firm based or i need to understand the demand created for acc cement only that is firm based what is the demand for total number of seats available or let me say total number of students who are demanding for ca foundation classes in bangalore industry based it might be for xyz academy multiple academies put together but if i alone analyze for advait learning that is called as firm based same way entire demand created by total cement demanded in the nation by all the brands industry level cement industry demand by ac cement alone firm based demand next time based short period and if it is less than a year say 3 months 6 months or less than a year lesser than a year that is short run greater than a year like 5 years 10 years more than a year that is called as long run 2 to 5 years or even more than that so short term forecast or long run forecast firm based forecast or industry based forecast next on what all kind of goods and services we do forecast producer goods and say example milk as a household if i purchase a milk that is for a end consumption if i have a sweet shop then i am purchasing a milk still it is a raw material that is a producer good it is not a consumer good durable and non durable best furniture durable chocolate non durable it is perishable in nature derived demand and autonomous demand best example i am planning to open a petrol bank now i should understand in this locality how many of them are ready to afford for a petrol and how many of them are ready to get a petrol because most of them are using electric bike and 90% of the city is using electric bike 
only some 10 percentage of people are using petrol what will i do by opening a petrol bunk in this locality because my petrol's demand is dependent on number of bike users in this locality derived one product's demand is dependent on another product's demand or usage that is derived autonomous means nowhere dependent on anything it's completely independent next industry demand and permanent industry level short run and long run demand clear these are the different kinds of goods and services on which demand forecasting is made last but not the least methods of demand forecasting what is it methods of what are the different methods in which forecast will be made number one survey of buyers interview complete enumeration method that means complete data and facts will be collected from the customers next one sample survey method we'll give some sample to you you have it you consume it and let us know how did you feel last one customer may not be a consumer sometimes you will ask your parents to get ice cream your parents are customers but who is a consumer you people end user i need to know the consumer's reaction consumer's review end user method last but sorry next one collective now i will say tomorrow morning i'm thinking to start the class at 6 pm i'm asking your opinion collective opinion okay is that if i start at 6 pm like this how was the product is it good how is the teaching of shashikiran sir bakwa sir nothing nothing sir full waste of time ah, next expert opinion method we consider some one important fellow as an expert he knows much better things than us he is in industry from so many years he knows when things will be in a good favorable way when things will turn out to be a bad condition we'll speak to him we will take his consultation and based upon his suggestions we will production we will plan our production line next statistical uh, we will collect all the information we will put that in a form of graph and then we will take analysis like trend projection graphical representation fitting trend regression all such things controlled for my chocolate i want to know the review only in the locality of maleshwaram especially two important colleges m black and MLAWC within the age group of 18 to 25 18 to I'm controlling my experiment only locality only for these two colleges only between the age group of 18 to 25 I'm controlling my experiment and then I'm getting the results that is called as control experiment last one barometric method this comes in chapter 5 forecasting things leading indicator lagging indicator coincidental indicator there I will explain this clear so these are the methods of forecasting what are they methods of forecasting so by this entire demand comes to an end clear any specific doubt in any of the topics in demand kindly flip back the pages have a look in case of any doubt let me know before moving forward to supply so now let us start discussing about unit 2 in ICA material this is given as unit 3 of chapter 2 supply so we have understood the entire demand concept that is from a consumer point of view except demand forecasting now this entire unit we will study from a manufacturer point of view or a producer's point of view say shashikiran has got a one acre plot of land how many acre plot of land so i am growing paddy what am i growing let me say i am growing 100 bags of paddy 100 out of this 100 bags now i am ready to sell 80 bags i am ready to sell so 20 bags i'm retaining it for myself for self consumption and further productivity out of 100 bags how many bags am i ready to sell only this 80 bags is a supply that's it i'm not supplying the entire 100 bags so what is a supply supply is a part of stock this 100 bag is a stock out of this part of a stock whichever i'm offering it to the market that is called as supply see there supply is a part of stock which is offered to and supply is a even demand was a flow concept what is this flow concept there are two concepts actually stock concept and flow concept best example when you are preparing a balance sheet you will write one statement at top what is it balance sheet as on 31st march that is you are only calculating that balance sheet only on that one particular day by end of a financial year that is a stock concept on that particular day only once in a year calculating that is a stock flow means you can calculate whenever you want jan feb march april 15th of jan or 15th of october 14th of february any time whenever you are able to calculate things whenever you are able to know accuracy on a particular day that is a flow concept that is a 
So demand and supply can be calculated at any point of time. There is no restriction. We should only calculate on 31st of March. So demand and supply both are dash concept. And this entire unit called a supply we study from a manufacturer's point of view. There was three conditions to be called as a demand. Desire to buy, ability to pay, willingness to. Same way, look here. The term supply refers to the amount of goods and services that the producers are. Condition number one. Point number two, able to offer to the market for a, during a given period of willingness, ability and for a various price. If they are ready to sell in the market at the given point of time, even this is called as supply. Even there are three conditions in supply. Clear? In short, supply is a part of stock which is offered for. And supply is a dash concept. Demand is a dash concept. Supply we study from dash point of view. Next, determinants of supply. What do you mean by determinants? Those factors which will make the prices, or oh sorry, which will make the supply to change. Point number one, price. Now we are thinking from a dash point of view. Manufacturer point of view. For a manufacturer, what is important? Profits. When prices are more, will you make more profit or when prices are less? When prices are more, definitely when prices are more, you will also like to supply more and more and sell more and more. That means when the product prices are increasing, when the product prices are, that means we supply more and more. When the product prices are less, then we supply. Arrow marks are in the same direction. So it is dash related. So price and demand was negatively related. Price and suppliers. Point number two, price of Say also I have one more farmer by name Vinay or XYZ name, some random name. He is growing Ragi. He is growing. Say he is earning a revenue of 1 lakh 20,000. 1 lakh. Now Shashikiran by selling 80 bags of paddy, I am earning 1 lakh. I am earning. And there is one more farmer by name Mr. Doni. Now Mr. Doni is producing say sugarcane. Now he is getting a revenue of 1,50,000 in the same one acre plot of land. Now Shashikiran, next year, given a chance, which crop will I grow? Sugarcane. Why? Because revenue is more. When the related prices, revenues are more. When related prices or related commodities, prices are more. Automatically, that supply will increase and my commodity supply will decrease. Even because of prices of related goods, the supply of a commodity will vary. Point number three. Technology, as we all know that in today's world, without technology, business cannot sustain. Technology and business both are highly interdependent with each other. Highly interdependent with each other. When technology is getting updated, when technology is becoming more and more advanced, we can produce things in a better way. It will take less time. That means productivity will increase. Supply will increase. If technology becomes outdated, productivity will decrease. Supply will decrease. Next point number four, factors of production. How many factors of productions are there? Which are those four factors of production? Land, labor, capital and are this land, labor, capital and organization available for free of cost? What does land expects? What does labor expects? Wages or salaries? What does capital expects? What does organization expects? Profit. Now you tell me, as a business owner, when you pay very high rent, are you happy or less rent? You want less rent to be paid. Very high wages, are you happy or less wages? Very high interest rate to the banker for borrowing a loan or less interest rate? Now comes the important point. Profit. High profit or less profit? Selfish people. You want less rent to be paid? Less wages, less interest rate, only and only your profit should be I, yes, sir, that is the reason I am doing business. Am I doing any charitable organization here? No. Only if my profitability is more, then definitely I am ready to produce more and supply more. If my profitability is less, why will I produce more and supply more? So, my intention to produce and sell goods and services itself is to earn. Only if that profit earning capacity is more, then I will produce and supply more. If profit earning capacity is less, then I will produce and supply less. So, even factors of production will vary the supply. Last but not the least, what is it? If government policies are 
favorable without any much rules and restrictions or any form of barriers on the business then we are also interested to produce more and more if all unnecessary rules and regulations are there you should not do that you should not do this so much of profit you should use it for a csr fund and lot many restrictions are there am i interested to produce and sell more definitely no so these are the five important determinants of supply which are the five important determinants price price of related goods technology factors of production government policies clear and next law of same thing all other things remains when price increases when price decreases same dialogue but here it is a positive relationship clear so there is a relationship between price and supply expressed in a mathematical equation called as that is nothing but s is equals to function of lucky people in your syllabus they have not given negative relationship in supply they have only represented positive relationship so there is nothing called as exceptions to law of supply in your syllabus but in reality it is existing in your syllabus it is not there clear so there is a relationship between supply of a commodity and price that is called as a supply function what is it next one same to same it will only show us a direction of change it is called as a qualitative statement all other things are same to same i'm not just touching upon the elements once again supply schedule and supply curve representing supply in the form of a is called as supply schedule see there apple oppo mi producers of cell phone prices are increasing their supply will also increasing if we analyze individual suppliers quantity supplied along with change in price that is individual supply curve you are not it is not a customer it is a producer clear same thing if we analyze the entire supply made by all the producers in the market due to change in price that is market supply schedule next supply curve represent it in the form of a graph and the price increases supply will also when price decreases supply will also dash relationship so graph is upward sloping linear curve from left to two. right if price increases quantity supplied will also increase if price decreases quantity supplied is also nature of supply curve upward sloping linear curve from left to right clear understood next comes elasticity of same to same dialogues but here we don't have income price cross and advertisement straight away we only and only consider it as price so it is a responsiveness or change in quantity supplied because of changes in and the formula will be percentage change in quantity supplied divided by percentage change in whatever we discussed as five types of price elasticity of demand same to same things are types of elasticity of supply relatively elastic greater than 1 relatively inelastic lesser than 1 unitary elastic equal to 1 same thing more proportionate change less proportionate change same proportionate change perfectly inelastic equal to 0 perfectly elastic equal to another two more things we need to remember here what is that even meaning also remain same relatively elastic now the nature of supply curve is a upward sloping general nature linear but it will be flatter now in case of relatively elastic it is going to be a flatter supply curve once again let me draw it and show for you people so it should be a normal curve should be like this supply curve but now it will not be upward sloping linear curve rather upward sloping flatter curve upward sloping flatter curve like this when we extend the supply curve when we extend the it will cut y axis it will cut which axis this we need to remember in excess now so the nature of supply curve is flatter supply curve when the supply line gets extended in case of relatively elastic it will cut which axis and relatively inelastic meaning remains the same now it is a steeper curve now it is a 
steeper curve like this when we extend the supply line now it will cut which axis x axis next unitary elastic now when the supply line gets extended supply line gets it will intersect at origin it will intersect at same proportionate change upward sloping linear curve from left to toe. right last to graph even that remains same meaning remains same whether price increase whether price now quantity supply remains unchanged quantity supply remains all basic necessaries of life comes into this category of perfectly inelastic even last one perfectly elastic whether price increase or whether price quantity supplied cannot be determined nature of graph is horizontal in perfectly inelastic it was vertical supply curve here horizontal supply curve clear that line getting extended we have to remember in relatively elastic flatter supply curve but when line gets extended it will cut y axis relatively inelastic steeper supply curve when line gets extended it will cut x axis unitary elastic upward sloping linear curve from left to toe right when line gets extended it will intersect at origin clear this is what elasticity of supply any doubts next let us move in what happened measurements of elasticity of supply so same way we had formula method arc method point method and outlay method but here we only speak about formula and arc method formula and arc method already we have discussed about that you know the formula everything remains the same there is no changes at all here expansion and of supply same to same just we will replace demand and we will mention it as what is the reason for expansion or contraction now in determinants price price of related goods factors of production technology government policy out of that only and only price changes same to same it is also called as now graph will be upward sloping curve this point e will move for e1 or it will move for e2 when there is an increase in price supply gets expanded over there when price increases demand contracts here when price increases supply expands when price decreases supply everything else remains same graph will change now graph is upward sloping curve and when price increases supply will expand when price decreases supply will and on a same supply curve there is a movement of this point e from e it will move for e1 or if not it will move for e2 it will move for e2 clear so expansion and contraction of supply is due to change in it is also called as movement on same supply curve next the second concept increase or increase or decrease in supply what is the reason for increase or decrease in supply change in other factors except price change in other factors except clear now observe things carefully here it was also called as shift in supply curve what did i explain in case of demand concept in case of just a minute it's loading ah. where is that okay i think we didn't try uh, plotted the graph let me show it ah this one so what used to happen when other factors are increasing other factors are which side shift right hand side shift when other factors are decreasing even in case of supply it is same see the supply curve upward sloping linear curve from left to toe right when other factors are increasing even in this case also it is shifting to which side when other factors are decreasing it is shifting to which side so upward sloping curve other factor decreases left hand side shift other factor increasing right hand side shift whether it is a demand concept or whether it is a supply concept when other factor increases with side shift right hand side shift general nature of demand curve downward sloping curve supply curve upward sloping curve so whether it is a increase in demand or increase in supply there is a with side shift right hand side shift when other factors are decreasing with side shift 
but your ICI material will never use a word called as right hand side shift or left hand side shift then what exactly will it use ah this black color line and orange color line is it upwards or downwards that means when other factors are increasing in demand demand curve will shift but in supply in supply see there black color and orange color line when other factors are increasing in case of supply chapter no doubt rhs is said but here it is called as downward shift so you will get confused which is upwards which is downwards so that's the reason we created a shortcut whether it is a demand or whether it is a supply when other factor increases right hand side shift same thing observe in case of decrease in demand it is r downward shift but in case of supply observe upward shift so this will confuse you guys that's the reason whether it is a demand or whether it is a supply when other factors are increasing right hand side shift when other factors are decreasing left hand side shift clear so this shift in demand curve and shift in supply curve this is the most important topic which will get interconnected again in chapter 4 unit 2 chapter 4 unit so is that clear so this is the unit number 2 chapter 2 supply any doubts in supply so we have done with demand and supply so the next one we are straight away jumping for chapter 4 unit 2 chapter 4 so which speaks about determination of price what is it and now already we have discussed about demand and supply what is the general nature of demand curve okay let us plot it down the general nature of demand curve is downward sloping curve from left to general nature of supply curve is upward sloping curve from left to now look at the board this is demand curve downward sloping this is supply curve upward sloping when demand and supply meets together that means when demand and supply are intersecting together that is called as equilibrium that is called as and at the point of equilibrium price remains constant at the point of equilibrium that means when total demand equals total supply or if not we can also call it as when aggregate demand is equals to aggregate this is the concept of industry equilibrium or market equilibrium when this equilibrium occurs price will remain price remains constant throughout the industry or throughout the market prices are going to remain what constant so what happens suppose if there is a changes in demand or changes in supply now observe this p1 especially this upper portion now more than a equilibrium price one sec now yeah. so the prices are even more greater than equilibrium prices in an economy that means this is the level where people are demanding for but we are supplying more and more say 100 units was the level of equilibrium but now people are just demanding for 70 units but as a manufacturers due to more price we have supplied 130 units that means supply is 130 units demand is only 70 units so this particular region will be considered as excess supply what is it there is more goods available in the economy than what is required by the customers in such a case in order to sell this excess goods you will start giving offers and promotion all such kind of discounts so what will happen to the effect of price i am not using a word called as price there we are using a word called as effect of price that effect of price will be decreasing when there is excess supply in an economy that will make the prices to 
decrease suppose if other way around if in the market if the prices are below the equilibrium prices that means we have supplied only 70 units to the market but people are willing to buy 130 units so this is the condition of excess demand people are ready to buy more and more but the availability of goods are less in case of excess demand people are also ready to buy at a more prices that means effect of price will increase in case of excess supply prices will decrease in case of excess demand prices will increase only and only at the point of equilibrium only and only at the point of that is when total demand equals total supply price remains constant price remains price remains clear so only when total demand is equal to total supply prices in the economy will remain constant if there is excess demand in an economy if there is more demand and less supply that will make the prices to increase if there is excess supply supply is more demand is less that will make the prices to decrease only at the level of equilibrium price remains constant and we already studied that there are a few circumstances where they will give a theory questions and they will ask you to identify what will happen to price and what will happen to quantity suppose see there change in demand change in when supply is that means supply will not at all change supply remains constant only demand is changing that means when we say change either demand can increase or demand can decrease suppose condition 1 demand is increasing demand is now that means already black color line see there the existing black color line like this whatever we have drawn this is supply curve this is demand curve this was the initial equilibrium all those black color lines was the initial lines accepted now when demand is increasing which side will a demand curve shift right hand side so this will be the new equilibrium d1 and s is intersecting at e1 at point e1 prices have increased quantity is also increasing like this in the exam the question can appear when demand increases and supply remains constant when demand increases and supply remains constant that will lead the quantity as dash quantity will decrease or increase superb quantity will uh, don't just go with your blind belief and mark the answer plot a graph like this and then you have to answer like this they can give any kind of a condition next when demand decreases and supply remains constant demand decreases lhs shift so new equilibrium even prices also decreasing quantity is also next change in supply when demand is constant now demand will not change only supply will change supply will change means either supply can increase or supply can decrease say supply is increasing supply is right hand side shift so e1 and d sorry s1 and d is intersecting at a new even at the new point even prices are decreasing but quantity is increasing like this one can decrease another can increase that will lead to a confusion so do not just go with a blind belief and mark the answer plot the graph and then come to the conclusions clear you already know when increase happens in demand right hand side shift when decrease happens in demand left hand side shift demand curve is a downward sloping curve supply is a upward sloping curve increase in demand right hand side decrease in demand left hand side like this you have to understand the question properly which is increasing which is decreasing or which is remaining same you have to analyze understand and then you have to plot the graphs clear and sometimes both can change together simultaneous change in demand and supply see there when demand increases more proportionate than supply that means what even demand is also increasing supply is also increasing but which is increasing more proportionate demand say demand is increasing more see the gap say 20 percentage is a increase in demand even supply is increasing say just 10 percentage demand increases more proportionate than supply so there are multiple lines there is a d1 as well as s1 along with normal d as well as normal yes so now this is a new equilibrium point e1 at the new equilibrium level price is also increasing quantity is also twist in the question which is increasing in more proportion quantity is increasing in more proportion than increase in price sometimes they will give an options like this listen to the question carefully when demand increases more proportionate than supply that will lead to a dash that will lead to dash option a 
price increases quantity decreases option b price decreases quantity increases or wait let me confuse you even more option a price increases quantity increases straight up answer price increases quantity increases option b price increases quantity decreases option c price increases less proportionate quantity increases more proportionate option d price decreases more proportionate quantity increases less proportionate option c was the answer like this they can confuse you with the option icai knows very well you people know the concept so they will start playing with english language so you need to be very careful while answering so don't go with the gut feeling kindly plot the graph and then come to the conclusion this will lead to a confusion like this there will be a simultaneous change there will be a see there when demand and supply changes in same proportion or see there when demand and supply changes in same proportion when demand and supply changes in suppose if demand increases 10 percentage even supply also increases by same 10 percentage in such a case price remains constant only quantity demanded as increasing if demand and supply is decreasing in same proportion price is still same only quantity will decrease like this that will confuse you guys so you have to plot the graph and then you have to come to the conclusion another area where you guys will go wrong demand is perfectly inelastic if demand is perfectly inelastic vertical demand curve it will not be downward sloping it will be a vertical demand curve only supply will be upward sloping and supply changes supply increase rhs supply decrease lhs see there when demand is perfectly inelastic and supply increases price is decreasing quantity same if supply is decreasing and demand is perfectly inelastic price increases quantity same like this you have to plot the graph and then you have to come to the conclusion either they can ask demand is perfectly inelastic or they can ask supply is perfectly inelastic and this war few examination question which we have solved in the class if you remember this is how examination question comes see there d1 and s1 are the original demand and supply curve d2 d3 s2 s3 are the probable new demand and supply curve that means whatever we just called it as d and s the initial black color line now they are calling it as d1 and s1 when demand increases right hand side shift d2 supply increases right hand side shift s2 when demand decreases left hand side shift d3 supply decreases left hand side shift s3 like this they have also given rhs lhs along with original demand and supply curve so initially equilibrium was 0.1 equilibrium was now totally there are like this nine equilibrium different different alternative conditions now they will give you a few questions like this see there question number one assuming x is a normal good x is a normal good holding everything else constant income is rising for which good if income rises demand will if demand increases with side shift right right hand side shift so right hand side shift is d2 okay income rises and prices of factors of production also increasing ah when prices of factors of productions are more profitability will be less so what will happen to supply supply will decrease when prices of factors of production is more supply decreases if supply decreases s3 d2 and s3 is intersecting at so new equilibrium is 0.2 new equilibrium is 0.2 this is how the questions will come you need to analyze see whatever we discussed in demand and supply determinants of demand elasticity law of demand from that any nook and corner they can pull out a question like this and they can interconnect with each other so you have to be very well aware about the concept that is why i used to say in the class pustak mein nahi mastak mein likho it's not just writing in your books you have to write it on your brain that is most important they can club any topics and they can ask you the questions only if you know the concepts properly then only you can analyze it and then only you can answer them in a right way clear next see the question number 2 now you guys should only answer the question number 2 first one i am only helped you out what is it we are analyzing the market for good z where the price of a complementary good y declines so x and y is it substitute and complementary which is that complementary complementary goods are dash related hello complementary goods are dash related who is that educated rascal who said positively related 
complementary goods are if prices of y is declining if prices of y is declining then demand for z will so if demand increases which one d2 clear at the same time there is a technological advancement in production of good z we are also analyzing for good z if technology increases supply will if supply increases so d2 and s2 is intersecting at 0.7 is the answer clear so this is how you have to analyze see that is what even after explaining it 100 times complementary good dash related positively related sir then what do you mean by ca come again we love your answer so ca is not chartered accountant if you answer like this ca means come again we love your answer come again that is what ica will say clear next question number three see there there is a heavy rain in Maharashtra during 2005 and 2006, which has caused a heavy arc in the rice crops. That means which has caused a flood. Because of that, demand will remain same. There is no information about demand. Only supply will decrease. Superb. There is no information given about the demand. They have just said there is a heavy rain in Maharashtra during 2005 and 2006 that has caused a flood. That means automatically supply will decrease if supply decreases lhs shift s3 no information about demand that means demand remains constant s3 d1 intersecting at answer is 0.3 clear next question number four assuming consumer expects the prices of a new car to significantly increase why what is the concept? Exceptions to law of demand. In a mere future, if the prices are increasing, demand will also increase. And there is no information about supply. Demand increases D2, no information about supply. S1, D2, S2, sorry, S1 and D2 intersecting at 0.5 will be the new equilibrium. Clear? This is what the concepts of market equilibrium is. Or it is also called as industry equilibrium see there equilibrium refers to the market situation where quantity demanded is equal to quantity supply the intercept of demand and supply determines equilibrium price at this price at the equilibrium price the amount that the buyers want to buy is equal to the amount that the sellers want to sell only at equilibrium price both buyers and sellers are satisfied Hence, equilibrium price is also called as, what is another name for equilibrium price? Market clearing price. And this comes again in chapter 1. Microeconomics is called as price theory. Why? Because it determines the market prices as the central theme of the microeconomic analysis. Henceforth, microeconomics is also called as macroeconomics. Income theory, microeconomics is price theory, macroeconomics is done, understood. So this is what chapter 4 unit 2, clear? So we are done with demand, we are done with supply, we are also done with chapter 4 unit 2, determination of price. Now the left out unit of chapter 2 that is consumer behavior, last but not the least, yet it is most interesting and super duper chapter, one of my favorite topics of chapter 2, consumer behavior, as the name itself is saying, how consumers behave in a different situation, when a product is given for a free of cost, how do they behave, when we need to pay the price of a commodity, how do we behave, when we are paying a price for a complementary goods, when we are consuming both the commodities together, how do we behave, or when we are not even paying anything, we are getting for free, muft mein milega, how do we pay? That is nothing but free. Nanu gurli, nam appu gurli, nam girlfriend gurli, boyfriend gurli, nam idi kandan gurli. Na elat cover tivi. Ah, jokes apart. Okay, let's come back to the topic. So, as the name itself is saying, how exactly we behave? And in economics, we assume that every consumer is a dash consumer. Apa, not rascal consumer. Every consumer is a. But in reality, we people are rascal consumers. Why? Because I wanted to buy a shirt, sir. I went to shopping. Except shirt, I bought everything else. My intention was to buy a... After going to the shop, sir, other things were actually good. So I bought all XYZ elements except 
shirt then you are a rascal consumer but economics believes that you are a who is a rational consumer my intention is to only purchase a shirt i will go and i will only purchase that means whose choice are consistent with goals they are called as rational consumers why we should analyze them as a rational consumer we know that in economics human wants are unlimited but resources are so because of that limited resources we consider every consumer as a rational consumer what our intention is there we only satisfy such intentions when we are consuming any goods and services what is the intention of consuming it in order to get satisfied because of that goods and services clear now when we are getting a satisfaction i'm happy about it until when i will consume until it gives me a satisfaction or say a maximum satisfaction after that there's no more giving satisfaction why should i consume so in this unit we are interested to identify that particular point or a where consumer is able to as many wants as within the given and that is what we call it as consumer equilibrium such consumer equilibrium has got two condition how many condition condition number 1 maximum satisfaction the goods which we are consuming should give us a maximum satisfaction and there should be no changes until we get maximum satisfaction i don't think of changing a commodity in short in this unit it explains us a particular point where consumer will be satisfied a most so in this chapter we are interested in identifying a consumer equilibrium in order to identify such consumer equilibrium there are two approaches how many approaches number 1 cardinal approach number 2 now priya assuming it's our birthday tomorrow assuming our parents have given 5000 rupees to priya priya what will you do with this 5000 rupees party full sir i saw a party ke saka gala sir adbit inen madaka so assuming that you are a number 1 kanjus also assumption assumption i know you are not but still considering you have to constrain yourself and satisfy many wants you have 5000 rupees with you what will you do first okay you will give treat if not the entire year they will screw you up so pani puri treat 500 rupees done assuming just pani puri treat 500 rupees done next still 4500 pending what will you do sir shopping sir definitely if it is my birthday i have to wear a new dress say i will go for a shopping i will buy a cloth for myself okay say you spent 2000 rupees still 2500 remaining ha huh? hello on birthday there is only shaving will happen no savings will happen one year whatever you save that will go on that one day that is called as birthday that is my definition of birthday uh next assuming you are not ready to save and all assumption my because economics is full of assumption so first you will give treat to your friends 500 rupees gone next you bought a cloth 2000 rupees gone next uh, sir will go for a movie sir i will take my friends for a movie say 1000 rupees gone till 500 is remaining what will you do shoes ha huh? sir popcorn beko movie god mele ah uh, why just movie so movie thousand rupee next to food ha uh, so treat and all that is chota mota treat the real treat comes here food in the movie popcorn this is what the real okay say that i let me alter it little listen to this okay sir i will take them to the movie and after coming out only selected friends have taken to movie no after that we'll go to a very good restaurant and we will have a nice food we will have a nice assumption assumption she will not take just assumption so what did alfred marshall said remember this is the main crux of a story i said there are two approaches to identify equilibrium the two approaches are cardinal approach and ordinal approach which are the two approaches this cardinal approach was developed by alfred marshall who developed cardinal approach now alfred marshall said see boss we can measure satisfaction in terms of numbers that means after giving treat to our friends idiot fella sir if not they will keep on teasing me entire year not that satisfaction and all some 50 utils that's it how much 50 utils that's it after buying cloth for myself i'm completely happy sir 150 utils of satisfaction how much 
and next sir we went to a very beautiful movie movie was also amazing sir we enjoyed 75 utils how much we went to a very nice restaurant say my favorite restaurant we had a food over there we got some 100 utils of satisfaction how much 100 utils of satisfaction like this we can measure satisfaction we can in terms of cardinal numbers cardinal so like how we will measure some distance in the form of kilometers some liquid in the form of liters in order to measure satisfaction that is utility that utility is termed as satisfaction we will use a tool by name utils is a tool to measure utility utils is a tool to measure this is what alfred marshall said we can measure satisfaction in terms of cardinal numbers that is cardinal measurability of utility is possible what is that cardinal measurability of utility is possible that is satisfaction can be measured in terms of that is in the form of utils so what is utility it is a want satisfying capacity of a commodity what is utils that is a tool to measure utility tool to measure utility now there were another two more economists by name rjd allen and jr reeks rjd allen and who developed ordinal approach they said see idiot fellow alfred marshall we can't measure satisfaction like this in terms of numbers apa only for example purpose i'm scolding economist you don't scold like that ah now only for example purpose now you said we can measure satisfaction in terms of numbers but in reality boss this is highly impossible this is highly impossible then what can be done they said we can give them a ranks or preference ranks or like what see for priya our first preference will be buying a cloth that will give more satisfaction after that going to a very good restaurant our favorite restaurant along with the friends next taking them for a last but not the least free to the entire classmates sir this is what ranks or preferences this is what is more applicable in a practical sense rather than giving them a cardinal numbers so that is what alfred marshall said that is we can give them a numbers we can give them a numbers by measuring them but rjd allen and jr he said no boss you can't measure them in terms of cardinal numbers rather we can give them ranks or preferences so who developed the ordinal approach rjd allen and jr he they said due to the drawbacks of cardinal approach what was the drawback we cannot measure satisfaction in terms of numbers and to accept that in the most practical way ordinal approach was develop see it is not possible to measure satisfaction in terms of numbers instead we can arrange them in the form of ranks or preferences ranks are so under cardinal approach we have two theory number 1 ldmu number 2 consumer surplus theory under ordinal approach also there are two theory indifference curve and budget line clear understood so remember who developed the cardinal approach alfred marshall what did alfred marshall said we can measure satisfaction in terms of numbers who who spoke about ordinal approach rjd allen and jr heeks what did they say we cannot measure satisfaction rather we can give them in the form of ranks or preferences now before going on to any of the theoretical concepts or any of the theory there are three basic concepts tu au mu total utility average utility marginal utility let us finish that see there number 1 total utility already we have done this in the class i also give the example say shashikiran and his friend say example mr vivek now we both were playing a badminton after playing a badminton we are feeling hungry we are feeling hungry okay we went to a shop we bought a biscuit packet for me one for vinay one now say vinay got a very important call from his important person now he is busy or a phone call now i am feeling hungry i opened a biscuit wrapper and i started eating the entire biscuit packet by consuming a first biscuit by consuming a i got 10 utils of satisfaction that is what ardin uh, let me say cardinal approach said alfred marshall said we can measure satisfaction in terms of numbers by consuming second biscuit i got 30 units of satisfaction by consuming third biscuit 60 units by consuming fourth biscuit 100 units by consuming the entire pack say all the 10 biscuits i got 300 utils of satisfaction that means 
And when I'm speaking about a third biscuit, what is the satisfaction that I've got? That means by consuming all three together. That means first, second, and third. When I say second one, that is first and second. When I say fifth one, that is one plus, two plus, three plus, four plus. That's the reason we call total utility is a summation or all the units that we are going to derive from a given set of units. That means by consuming all the units, what is the total satisfaction you have got? That is what is TU. That is what is? That means unit 1 plus unit 2 plus unit 3 until unit n number of units. That n can be any number of all the units consumed. That is called as total utility. Second one is average utility. Average. That means what is the satisfaction Shashikiran derived by consuming one single unit. That means totally you have consumed how many biscuits? 10 biscuits. Total satisfaction 300. For how many biscuits? 10. That means every single biscuit has given a satisfaction of how much? 30. That is what is average. Utility derived by consuming every single or one single unit. AU formula will be TU by Q. Total utility divided by quantity. Clear? See there. 10 by 1, 30 by 2, 60 by 3, 100 by 4, 50 by 150, 30. Clear? Like this, this is the average. Next comes the most important thing. That is marginal utility. Where? This is where Kahani may twist comes. This is the utility derived by consuming one additional or one extra unit of output. Say, when I was completely busy over a phone call, he didn't observe. I snatched one of the biscuit from his packet. That is what friends do. When they are busy over a phone call or with XYZ person, without his knowledge, tapak. That is what you have done to your siblings in your childhood. Same thing now we are also doing to our friends. Now I am consuming one extra biscuit. One. Now totally I am consuming how many biscuits? By consuming 11 biscuit, I got 350 utils. How much? That is total utility. By consuming all 11. But if I ask you, by consuming 11th biscuit alone. 11th biscuit alone. What is the satisfaction you got? 50. How did you identify? Simple, sir. 350 minus previous one, 300. That is what is a MU formula? TUN. That is present. Minus TU. N minus 1. This is 11th unit biscuit. Total satisfaction, 350. 10th unit total satisfaction, 300. 350 minus 300, 50. This formula applies only when output is continuous. Suppose if the informations are given like this. Suppose if the second one is not given. Suppose if fourth one is not given. Now, they are asking us to calculate MU by giving information about 1, 3 and 5. Output is not continuous. But meaning says it is only and only. 1 extra or 1 additional. Then second formula comes into picture. What is the second formula? MU is equals to change in total utility divided by change in. So, what is the difference between TU? 60 and 10. Difference? 50. What is the difference between 3 and 1? 50 by 2. So, third unit MU will be 25. Next, 150 and 60 difference 90. 5 and 3 difference 90 by 2. MU will be the 45 for fifth unit alone. Like this, if output is not continuous, output is second formula has to be used. And MU speaks about the contribution made by every extra unit. Every. Now, if I ask, what is the satisfaction I got by first biscuit alone? 10. First biscuit alone is 10. Second biscuit alone, 30 minus 10. 60 minus 30. 100 minus 60. 150 minus 100. Like this, this is the satisfaction we got by individual biscuit. By adding this individual biscuit, 10 plus 20. 10 plus 20 plus 30, 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40, 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40 plus 50. That means, in short, this TU is no doubt cumulative in nature. This TU is cumulative of MU. TU is cumulative of what? MU. Clear? So, these are the basic concepts. Total utility, average utility and marginal utility. Clear? Now, let's start with the first theory that is LD 
एम यू लॉ ऑफ डिमिनिशिंग मार्जिनल यूटिलिटी इन क्लास इफ यू रिमेम्बर वी यूज टू गिव दट जामून एग्जाम्पल वी यूज टू क्रिएट वन बिग स्टोरी देर and then we used to explain it in in detail as the time constraint we can't do all those dramas and angamas in crash course we have to straight away go with the topic what does the topic says when you keep on consuming a particular commodity over and above continuously without time gap that means say for preeti assuming she likes jamun preeti right priya somewhat adjust ma ah priya now for priya assuming that she likes jamun even i have got jamun today is my birthday assuming whoever comes first to the class only for them i will give sweets let me say i have got some seven sweets with me only for first to seven students who comes early to the class all let let if people so whoever come early only for them i thought i will give sweets but today is holiday i forgot festival but even preeti also forgot i uh, sorry priya also forgot and now priya also came to the class because she stays very nearby pg next road only even she forgot she came now i gave her a sweet sir what special today is my birthday oh happy birthday sir okay she took early morning 7 o'clock class without having breakfast she has come to the class by consuming first biscuit alfred marshall said we can measure satisfaction super sir sweet because her favorite sweet she is like sir next my friends purti will come she don't like sweets can i have that sweet also can't say no to student okay have it how was it first one was good first one was second one is superb next she wants one more sir from which shop did you get this sir actually nice asha sweets you don't know in maleshwaram full famous where sir go straight take left after the class you will find there sir before going there can i have one more okay chalo take now first one was good second one is third one is ultimate say she got 95 utils of satisfaction next she is like sir early morning class and my favorite sweets are now i'm feeling even more hungry after eating three sir last one sir one more just one more okay chalo fourth one now if i ask how was your fourth one sir first one was good huh? second one was super huh? third one is ultimate fourth one is extraordinary extraordinary say she got 110 utils of satisfaction next she is like sir Ah, sir, this is the last one, sir. This is my favorite sweet you are holding in front of. Ah, oh, I should give sweets to other classmates, ma. Whoever comes, they will feel bad if I don't. Sir, no one will think anything, sir. I will get them tomorrow. Don't worry. You give me that last one, sir. Chalo, okay. I am giving the fifth one. I am giving the mind blowing fifth one is mind one twenty utils of satisfaction. Say our capacity is done. Five sweets done. Tummy filled. now i will say see any how you had five sweets only two is remaining why don't you eat one i will eat one she is like cadbury shorts advertisement laadu bandu bhage bitta even without asking jashi sir jashi sir is giving now chalo fine give sir she will take the sixth one she will eat but her tummy is filled how did you find nothing sir my already tummy is filled ah okay not bad now that means no additional satisfaction satisfaction is still stay same 120 only see any how you had six one more remaining it's not a big deal to you if you don't eat this i will fail you in economics and you influence now by great difficulty she is eating the seventh sweet now after that sir two minutes sir i will go to washroom and come why what happened nothing sir nothing she will go there she will puke everything and she will come back she will get dissatisfied she will get is satisfied so from 120 the satisfaction came down to now that means it looks like satisfaction is increasing when she kept on consuming one after the other one after the other but in reality satisfaction is not increasing it is decreasing from the very first unit itself for that we need to identify mu output is continuous output is if output is continuous formula mu is equals to tu n minus tu n minus 1 accepted Now see there. First unit is also fifty. Mu speaks about fifty. Satisfaction will be fifty. Next seventy five minus fifty, twenty five. Ninety five minus seventy five, one ten minus ninety five, one twenty minus one ten, one twenty minus one twenty, hundred minus one twenty, minus twenty. Now the clear cut picture. Satisfaction is not actually increasing. It is decreasing. now if i ask you people what is the maximum sweet that she has to consume definitely you will say 5 6 5 
आंसर इज सिक्स ओनली आफ्टर कंज्यूमिंग सिक्स स्वीट शी गॉट टू नो इट इज नो मोर गिविंग सैटिस्फैक्शन दट मीन वेन शी हैड अ थर्ड वन शी वॉज गेटिंग ट्वेंटी यूनिट ऑफ सैटिस्फैक्शन वेन शी हैड फोर्थ शी गॉट फिफ्टीन यूनिट वेन शी हैड फिफ्थ शी गॉट टेन यूनिट विद द सेम अजम्पन शी विल ऑल्सो ईट सिक्स वन ओनली आफ्टर कंज्यूमिंग सिक्स शी गॉट टू नो दिस इज नो मोर गिविंग satisfaction will she give a attempt of consuming seven but when she had fifth one did she knew that next sweet will not give her any satisfaction that's the reason sixth one she will stop this is where we call it as equilibrium in ldmu what is the condition of equilibrium in ldmu tu should be maximum tu should be and mu should be this is the condition of equilibrium and whenever equilibrium occurs mu will be zero marginal utility that means additional satisfaction from the commodity is clear and listen to this very carefully relationship between tu and mu what is it relationship between tu and especially the point number 1 was very important point number 1 when tu is increasing 50 75 95 what is happening to mu that is tu increases at diminishing rate that means no doubt tu is increasing but tu is increasing at a lesser rate because tu is cumulative of dash mu just now we discussed tu is derived only by cumulating with mu that mu is not increasing fast mu is decreasing we are adding the tu values in a decreasing trend that's the reason tu no doubt increases but tu increases at diminishing rate tu increases at point number 2 when tu is maximum tu is mu is this is what is called as equilibrium condition in ldmu clear next point number 3 this is another important one when tu starts decreasing last level mu is negative mu is negative here the examination question comes from this area diminishing rate purposefully they will give another way around when tu is increasing when tu is mu will be decreasing this is the logic we also know that tu increases at dash rate but in exam question they will say tu decreases at diminishing rate the statement is true false partially true none of the above false but natural love and affection goes for option a true true that is what we will say tu is not decreasing there tu is increasing but increasing at dash rate diminishing rate so that is what i said when you know the concept your icia will not play with the concept they will play with english language and you people will get confused and you are expert in marking wrong answer then you are tumma kashta sir so you have very difficult course icia will not pass us only Pass what percentage? See, just twenty percent. Questions are clear. You people didn't understand that in a proper way. That is what will happen. So be clear when you are reading the questions. Clear. Yeah. So this is the relationship between TU and MU. Now see the assumption for Preeti, Priya or Preeti ma? Ah, Priya. Ava ke every time confusion. Priya. Now when I gave a sweets to Priya, did I charge anything with Priya? so the commodity was given for a free of cost assumption number 1 product is given for a and i assumed that priya is a rational consumer priya is a rational consumer and there was a continuous consumption one after the other one after the other like that there was no time gap and all those seven sweets which i bought from the same shop same size same taste they are homogeneous goods they are last but not the least Alfred Marshall said we can measure satisfaction in terms of numbers that is cardinal measurability of utility is possible these are the five assumption these are the five assumption which is that number 1 commodity should be given for a free of cost point number 2 rational consumer continuous consumption homogeneous goods and services satisfaction can be measured in terms of utils that is in the form of numbers in the form of numbers clear understood next see there and consumer goes on consuming a particular commodity satisfaction that they get from the commodity will diminish 
in reality it looks like satisfaction as increasing when we consume more and more units but in reality satisfaction is decreasing it is not increasing it is not increasing rather it is decreasing clear this is what the concept of ld mu what is the equilibrium condition tu should be maximum and mu should be and as we all know that there are six circumstances where ld mu is not applicable number one rare collections old stamps old coins if you keep on giving to a person more and more he is even more happy don't say hey, no no shashikiran said ld mu you gave yesterday you gave day before yesterday today reached maximum no 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 satisfaction take it out will he say definitely no next in case of for priya if at all instead of giving jamun if i give 100 rupees note she is like let me see your capacity sir give she will never say no money and well third one harmful drugs and drunkards they will never say no in case of sir already i have one bungalow do you want one more bungalow you already have one luxurious car do you want one more next very small units of you are feeling thirsty instead of giving a glass of water i will give a spoon of water how do you feel at ton kapala kwar da kodre full water that is how you will feel next in case of hobbies ldmu will not work clear so this is the concept of ldmu the name itself says law of diminishing marginal utility mu will be diminishing from the very first unit itself but it looks like satisfaction is increasing when we keep on consuming same commodity over and above the satisfaction keeps on decreasing it will not increase clear so that was ld mu the second one is consumer surplus theory consumer surplus so beautiful example here movie ticket example first day first show favorite hero movie i wanted to go 500 rupees black ticket as ready to pay but you got to know this theater belongs to shashikiran ah sorry dhanush sir in the example la ah, what was the example which i gave okay we will change the example now okay do one thing assuming you bunk the shashikiran's class who will attend that day i full theory first day for sure say your favorite hero movie getting released you know that in a counter tickets are not available you went to the theater as expected not available then you will realize okay this theater belongs to pj sir punar sir you will call punar sir hi sir how are you we are missing out your classes why what happened my shashikiran sir class not at all good sir who will go so only sir you only said enjoy your student life so i have come to watch my favorite heroes movie sir in your own theater But tickets are not available, sir. Just two one tickets, sir. Wait, let me call Shashi Kiran and inform. You have bunked this glass, and upon that, you are giving me a call and asking for a ticket, sir. Sir, you only said enjoy, sir. Only one single day, sir. Favorite hero, first day, first show movie, sir. Okay, this is the last time. If you come across, if I come across doing same such things, I will kick you out of the institute. Okay, sir. Last time, hello, fine. Now you are ready to pay five hundred, but you paid only. 200 say the counter price was only 200 you got the ticket for 200 rupee you were ready to pay how much but you paid so whatever customer is ready to pay that is called as potential price what actually customer pays that is called as you were ready to pay 500 but you paid 200 by just paying 200 you got a satisfaction worth 500 that means you got a extra satisfaction of 300 rupee that is what is consumer surplus whatever extra worth of satisfaction that a consumer enjoys is called as consumer surplus consumer clear and say next day after she coming back to the class will she be silent definitely no now she will start influencing all her other battalion group and now 10 people have bunked how much 10 people have bunked she kiran class on second day now same theater she said see yesterday only ticket was available only for 500 rupees now quantity is more even shashikiran has thought when production is more when demand is more automatically in a bulk we will get for a, a surprise we will bargain and we will get for 400 rupees everyone keep ready 400 rupees per ticket one of the student will say wait this theater belongs to teacher sir why do you want to pay 400 and all wait she can't say yesterday she has already taken that benefit now other student will pay let me say they will call same dialogue sir how are you sir we are missing you a lot What happened, Master Shikiran? Class is not going good. No, sir, same sleepy class and all. And fine, sir, one help, sir. What is that, Master? Sir, we have come to your theater, sir. Just ten tickets needed. What? Just ten. Wait, let me call P. S. Shikiran, sir. During his class time, you have bunked, sir, sir. Please, sir. You only said enjoy student life. 
okay this is the last time you should not do it okay now she got 10 tickets for 200 rupee but they were ready to pay how much but they got it for there is one more problem in third visit what is the third visit every friends are like two kinds one college friend second one home friends if you go for a movie with the friends whom you have in a college there is a one war that happens near your home bidipa doddoru nam jothela el bartira nivo dialogues will come same dialogues will come now they are ready to go for a third time but this time she is very clever she can't call pj sir pakka he will kick her out of the institute so she will go one hour early to the theater she will stand in the lane and she will get the tickets for 200 rupees only now first time she was ready to pay how much second time third time that means after every consumption her ability to pay is decreasing that is what even the concept of consumer surplus especially potential price which one even that is affected with ldmu that is affected with see there the concept of consumer surplus is subject to ldmu the price which we are ready to pay will reduce gradually when we go on consuming a particular commodity so what is consumer surplus in short difference between potential price and actual price difference between potential price and that is called as consumer surplus and we also took one more beautiful example bisleri advertisement inspired by the bisleri advertisement there is a shop in middle of desert ha uh, which sells water for not humans for camels ha uh, that advertisement we got inspired and we took this values so over there suppose that you people have gone for a trip to rajasthan no water at all you will find one shop pakka shashikiran said in highways and all when you are traveling you know they will charge extra and you are in desert getting water is impossible that idiot fellow has got a shop pakka you will charge double if the prices of half liter water bottle is 10 rupee this guy will charge other will say no 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 maybe 50% extra and all and there is one more fellow called as nomad who wanderers there only every day they know there is one stupid fellow i don't know how to do business if mrp is 10 rupee he will also sell for 10 rupee he expected the prices only to rupees 10 but luckily the person is only selling for rupees 10 only for rupees 10 first time the first fellow was expecting the prices to be rupees 20 but they paid 10 so consumer surplus potential price minus actual price extra satisfaction worth of 10 second fellow expected it to be 15 but paid only consumer surplus third fellow expected it to be 10 also paid consumer surplus this is where the equilibrium lies when potential price equals actual price that is called as equilibrium or when consumer surplus is zero this is defined as listen to this carefully potential price is also called as marginal utility what is another name for potential price when price paid is equals to mu when price paid is equals to this is the condition of equilibrium in case of single goods in case of only one single commodity we are paying for a price and whatever price that we are paying that is equal to the satisfaction what we are deriving that is called as equilibrium that is called as i will give lunch break respond idiot fellows now when price paid is equals to m u that is called as equilibrium in how many goods suppose we are consuming complementary goods two goods what is the equilibrium m u of x divided by price of x should be equal to y divided by y this is the equilibrium in case of if it is more than two goods same formula m u of x divided by price of x equals m u of y divided by until m u of n number of units divided by price of n number of units this is in case of more than this is greater than two goods this is the condition of equilibrium accepted so in case of single commodity this is where most of the question comes in case of single commodity what is the condition of equilibrium when price paid is equal to mu when price paid is equal to now when we represent the same table in the form of graph in the form of this is how it represents first time we were ready to pay how much 20 next 15 next it became 10 so we have consuming three units for all the time we have paid only and only rupees 10 this is nothing but actual price but mu is also called as potential price 
so when we represent in the form of a graph the shaded region the triangle looks like a consumer surplus consumer that's the reason consumer surplus is also called as welfare triangle that means when we represent in the form of a graph the region of consumer surplus looks like a triangle that is the reason why consumer surplus theory is also called as what welfare triangle what is it welfare and listen to this very carefully just now we have drawn the graph it doesn't matter how many number of units you buy price will be rupees 10 per bottle but your potential price the ability to pay the price for a commodity keeps on decreasing accepted this is what potential price was this is what the region of consumer surplus was looking that is the reason we also called consumer surplus as what welfare triangle now observe this very carefully this is supply curve this is demand curve the point where demand and supply meets together is called as equilibrium at the point of equilibrium price remains price remains does it look something familiar hmm? this is where the exam question comes anything below demand curve anything and above price line is called as consumer surplus it is called as anything above supply line anything above supply line and below price line is called as producer surplus it is called as and there is one repeated question in the exam every single time anything below demand curve anything is called as total utility it is called as total utility kindly write this down this is where you people will go wrong anything below demand curve and above price line is called as consumer surplus anything below price line and above supply curve is called as producer anything below demand curve is called as total utility what is it total clear so this is the concepts of consumer surplus theory this is what cardinal approach is all about so remember in case of single commodity where in case of single commodity what is the condition of equilibrium price paid is equal to mu mu is also called as potential price in case of two commodity mu of x by price of x equals mu of y by more than two commodity until m u of n divided by price of n clear understood so we have finished with cardinal approach we discussed about ldmu and consumer surplus theory now let us enter into ordinal approach so which speaks about indifference curve and budget line the most easiest and also the important from the examination point of view so what does ordinal approach said we cannot measure satisfaction in terms of numbers rather we can give them in the form of rank or preferences so what is indifference curve it is a combination of two commodity which gives level of satisfaction that means we need to compulsorily consume two commodity which is end up going to give us a same level of satisfaction connected in the form of a curve is called as indifference curve see this is how indifference curve looks it is downward sloping curve dash to the origin convex to the origin downward sloping curve convex to the origin but there are few assumptions in indifference curve point number one there are how many goods he or she has to completely buy the two goods that means whatever income we have we are completely buying how many goods two goods that means there is no savings sir after spending it on completely two good suppose assuming you have consumed let me say tea and biscuits you have take you have let me say you have taken one cup of tea and one packet of biscuit but i didn't wanted one entire packet of biscuit i wanted more and more cup of tea then what should be done only left out us barter system only left out us and as we all know now utility is measured in terms of ranks or preferences rather than giving them a utils rather than giving them a and they say that suppose if at all basket a has more commodity than basket b say basket a has got two apples one banana and one cherry basket b has got two apples and two bananas which basket will you choose definitely basket one than 
basket two that means whichever basket has got more commodity but in reality both the basket has got four units clear so like this that is the last assumption see there if commodity a has got more sorry if combination a that basket one has got more commodity than basket two then a must be preferred over b that means basket one should be preferred over b now characteristics what is the general nature of indifference curve downward sloping convex to the origin point number one indifference curve is downward sloping from left to right why because of limited income whatever limited income is there we are completely spending on buying how many goods two commodity and there is no so whatever limited income is there we are completely spending on both the commodities that's the reason it is a downward sloping curve from left to toe. right point number two it is dash to the origin this is the most beautiful point what is this convex that means there is a bend that bend occurs due to what diminishing rate of substitution this is the most important point what is it that means we are sacrificing one commodity to get another commodity that is what is called as rate of substitution it is a rate at which one commodity is exchanged with another see there what i said i have 100 rupees with me i am consuming tea and biscuit i got one cup of tea and one packet of biscuits say there are 12 biscuits now i am feeling i wanted more and more cup of tea rather than 12 biscuit okay i identified someone who is ready to give me a tea by accepting biscuit barter system now i am consuming two cup of tea can i still consume 12 biscuit say i am only having eight biscuit how many biscuit did i sacrifice four biscuits 12 biscuits i had now i only have eight i have sacrificed that means in order to increase one cup of tea i have sacrificed four biscuit one is to four still i am feeling more cup of tea is required okay third cup of tea can i still consume eight biscuits say i'm consuming only five biscuit now how many biscuit did i sacrifice okay still i want one more cup of tea uh, now i'm having only three biscuit how many biscuit did i sacrifice see there first i sacrificed four biscuit next uh, next that means when i'm sacrificing it my intention to sacrifice goes on decreasing that is what when i'm sacrificing thing i will not sacrifice more and more oh first i sacrificed four next i will sacrifice five next i will sacrifice six okay six plus four ten plus five fifteen do i have fifteen biscuits not at all so sacrificing ratio cannot be increasing in nature it will always and always be that is the reason why graph is convex to the origin remember rate of substitution is also called as marginal rate of in order to increase one more extra unit of a commodity what did we sacrifice what did we so indifference curve can never be concave it will be always and always but in two cases the graph will be different rather than downward sloping convex number one in case of assuming that after going back to home you have got four hours of time either you will play or if not nah, sleep only we know not study and all she said proper answer that is what she will do nah. But we assume that you are a good people. Assumption, assumption. Exams are nearby, you will study. Assumption. Now, two hours you will play and two hours you will study. If you want to increase the play by one more hour, what you should do? Sacrifice the play, study by one hour. That means now sacrificing ratio is one is to one. In order to increase one hour of play, you have sacrificed one hour of studies. When sacrificing ratio is equal, such equal sacrificing ratio comes only in case of perfect. Then the graph will be downward sloping curve from left to right. Here you have to be very careful. In demand also we have studied about substitutes. Substitute goods are dash related. If it is positively related, graph is. But in indifference curve, substitute goods are downward sloping linear curve so understand the question carefully and then mark the answers clear next perfect complementary it will be l shape curve it will be to be frank it should be upward sloping curve like this suppose if i'm using five pen five refill that is perfect complementary just complementary means one bike 10 liters petrol bike and petrol is complementary but here i can't say i have 10 liters petrol i should get 10 bike no that is not perfect complementary. For 5 pen, I need 5 refill. That is perfect complementary. It should be upward sloping curve. But in your syllabus, they have given it as L shape curve. Only in these two circumstances, indifference curve is not a convex curve. In perfect substitutes, downward sloping linear curve, perfect complementary, it is L shape curve. So we discussed the characteristic features. Point number one, 
it is downward sloping from left to right why it is downward sloping from left to right due to limited income why is it convex to the origin because of diminishing rate of substitution but in case of perfect substitutes downward sloping linear curve perfect complementary l shape curve point number 3 indifference curve whichever is away from the origin or completely towards right hand side will give the higher level of satisfaction and remember if there are more than one indifference curve in a graph we call it as see ic1 ic2 ic3 if i select ic1 three units of a one unit of b ic2 three units of a two units of b but ic3 three units of a and three units of b definitely i select ic3 because more number of units can be consumed so whichever is away from the origin or completely towards right hand side will give higher level of satisfaction and no indifference curve has to intersect with each other why just now we said whichever is towards the right hand side higher level satisfaction before intersection i see to after intersection how come different levels of income can give same level of satisfaction and different different kinds of satisfaction after and before the point of intersection no highly impossible this leads to the misconception of the definition of indifference curve so ic curve should never intersect with each other and even though if indifference curve is not parallel to each other they will never intersect and they need not be always parallel they need not be because in order to increase the consumption of one we will decrease the consumption of another so they need not be parallel to each other last but not the least they should never touch any of their axis if it is touching y axis that means we are not at all consuming good a we are only consuming good b if it is touching x axis it is not at all consuming good b we are only consuming good a but the definition says it is a combination of two commodities clear so this was the concept of indifference next budget line same to same just continuation combination of two commodity where a consumer can buy at a given income and so i have 60 rupees income i need to consume two commodity product a and product b product a will cost me 10 rupee product b will cost me 15 rupee like this i should have a proper price of a commodity price level and also income so this is also called as price line and income line price line and income line suppose within 60 rupees if i need to only consume a how many units of a i can consume 6 units only b 4 units say 6 units of a 4 units of b this is the line which i will connect with x axis and y axis so this is my budget line if i select any point on the budget line say 3 units of a and 2 units of b so 3 units of a 10 into 3 30 rupee 15 into 2 30 rupee totally i am spending how much 60 rupee that means any point on the budget line will make me to spend the entire income as possible any point below the budget line say only just one unit of a and one unit of b yes we can also spend we can also save still possible tick mark tick mark but any point beyond the budget line is not possible out of my budget i don't have so much to spend so any point on the budget line is possible any point below the budget line is possible but any point above the budget line is and like how we discussed rhs and lhs shift in demand and supply even in case of budget line there is a shift in budget line there is a so such shift is of two kinds shift is of how many kinds rhs shift as well as same to same thing rhs and lhs now what are the reasons for the shift due to change in price or due to change in suppose if income of a consumer increases or else if price of a product decreases that will lead to an rhs shift complete opposite is lhs shift say if income of a consumer decreases or price of a product increases that will lead to a lhs shift so remember there is a shift in budget line either it can shift to right hand side or either it can shift to what are the reasons for right hand or left hand side shift due to change in price or due to change in income of a consumer if income increases and price decreases rhs shift if income decreases and price increases see i have taken this example let me continue with the same i am having a income of how much 60 rupee commodity a 10 rupee commodity b 15 rupee with a maximum of 6 i can consume b maximum of 
four units I can consume. Okay, let's continue with the same thing. See here. Maximum of A, six units. Maximum of B. This is my budget line. That initial black color line is a budget line. Say, my income is increasing from 60 to 75. Now, income has increased. Now, income is rupees 75. Product A is still 10 rupee. Product B is still 15 rupee. What is the maximum of A I can consume with uh, 10 rupees of product A? 7.5 units. What is the maximum of B? See here, 7.5 units of A, 5 units of B. Now, demand curve is shifting which side? Right hand side. Why? Because income has increased. Income has. Now, okay, I have taken increase in income. Let's take increase in price. Now, my income is still rupees 60 only. There is no change in income. Income is still rupees. Now, product A, prices from rupees 10, let me say it has become rupees 12. Product B, from rupees 15, it has become rupees from 60 rupee, what is the maximum A I can consume now? 5 unit. Maximum of B? 3 units. See here, 3 units of B, 5 units of A. There is which side shift? Left hand side shift. So, what are the reasons for RHS and LHS shift? Either increase in income or decrease in price will lead to right hand side shift. If not, decrease in income or increase in price will lead to right hand, le le left hand side shift. So, shift can appear because of changes in income and because of changes in price. Kani may twist is, every single time, prices of both the commodity need not change. Sir, when I am taking, observe this very carefully. You said A and B, both the prices are changing together. There is no rule that both the commodities prices has to change. Suppose only B prices are decreasing. Now, what will happen? In such a case, see there? There is only and only right hand side shift only for the product B, not for the product A. Like this, either LHS or either RHS can happen only with single commodity. There is no rule that it can shift for both the commodities together. Only when there is a change in prices of one commodity, such LHS or RHS is restricted to the region of that commodity, either for X axis or either for Y axis. Clear? So, this is the concept of budget line. Now, we discussed about equilibriums in cardinal approach. LDMU, what is the equilibrium? TU is maximum, MU is ordinal approach, single unit P equals MU. Two units, MU of X by price of X equals MU of Y by price of Y. In case of more than two, same formula until MU of N by price of N. Now, let us understand equilibrium under ordinal approach. Now, this is what is the equilibrium. There are two conditions. Indifference curve should be tangent to budget line or budget line should be tangent to indifference curve. What do you mean by tangent? It has to just touch and pass like this. It should not cut. Now, in the graph, which IC curve is tangent? IC2 is tangent. And at the point of tangency, our MRS or ROS, marginal rate of substitution or rate of substitution that sh should be that means both the commodity should be consumed in a same proportion or equal proportion or sacrificing ratio should also be same one is to one like that so these are the two conditions of ordinal equilibrium which equilibrium what is that first one ic curve or budget line should be tangent with each other Second one, at the point of tangency, MRS or ROS should be equal. This is the concept of ordinal approach equilibrium. Clear? So, this is what consumer behavior is all about. Clear? So, we have done with entire chapter 2 as well as chapter 4, unit 2. Now, let's get started with chapter 3. So, chapter 3, unit 2 is what we are going to do it first, that is theory of cost. After finishing theory of cost, then let us understand theory of production. Clear? So, what is cost? Cost is all those monetary expenditure. Which expenditure? Incurred by whom? Incurred by a manufacturer is called as cost. Only those monetary expenditures has to be considered, not the non-monetary expenditure. Depreciation is a non-monetary expenditure. Money is not actually going outside the firm. Only those monetary expenditures has to be considered. And this is from a dash point of view. 
so there are actually 12 types of cost but out of 12 eight are important how many are important which are those eight important types of cost fixed cost variable cost total cost average cost marginal cost opportunity and sunk cost accounting and economic cost incremental cost another rest four are explicit implicit private cost and social cost these are the remaining four cost clear so these are the eight important types of cost about which we will be understanding if you remember i used to give an example this is the premises in which i am manufacturing a furniture say for that premises i need to pay rent. say of rupees how much ah 100 rupees rent ah rent of rupees 10000 rupee say in order to produce one single unit okay avudunu sabha math consider maarana so in order to produce one single unit of bench my raw material cost is 100 next in order to produce 10 units in order to produce 100 units 10000 suppose if i need to produce 1000 units 1 lakh will be my raw material expenditure now say that i am producing 100 units i am producing in order to produce 100 units what will be my cost 10000 Twenty thousand rupee. It doesn't matter what I am producing, whether one unit, ten units, hundred units, or thousand units. Every month I have to pay a rent of how much? Ten thousand rupee. So what is the total cost? Total cost is nothing but combination of total fixed cost plus total. So total cost of producing hundred units will be ten thousand rupees of a fixed cost rent plus ten thousand rupees of variable cost. So total cost of producing hundred units is rupees twenty thousand. Now it doesn't matter whether I produce or don't produce. Even though if I'm not producing anything, output is zero. Still, I have to pay a rent of ten thousand. So they are unavoidable expenditure. What is it? Unavoidable expenditure. That is what we call it as fixed. cost it doesn't matter whether we produce or don't produce we have to definitely incur such cost that is called as unavoidable expenditure second one is raw material cost we can avoid them if we produce less variable cost will be less if we produce more variable cost will be that means raw material expenditure they are called as variable they depend based on output they depend based on if output is increasing variable cost will also if output is less variable cost will also be those cost which are dependent on output as variable cost those cost which are unavoidable in nature irrespective of output i am using a word irrespective that means whether i produce or don't even produce anything still i have to incur a fixed cost of how much 10000 rupees clear suppose okay someone will ask me okay shashi kiran you have produced 100 units in one month what is the cost that you are incurring to produce every single unit every i will say it is very simple if it is 20000 rupees for how many units 100 units that means it is rupees 200 for every single unit this is what we call it as average cost every single unit every say the customer has given me an order to produce 101 units how many units my customer is little senty about that number when he goes to temple 101 rupees for one day when he purchases anything 101 units when he gives an order for me 101 units but by mistake how many units did i produce 100 units in order to produce every single unit what is my cost order size is 101 by mistake i produced 100 what is that cost i will incur to produce this one extra unit 200 ah what do you mean by ca come again we love your answer i will only and only incur a raw material expenditure of 100 i will not pay the rent also so this is where the twist in the story is this is what we call marginal cost what is it mc it is a cost incurred to produce one extra or one additional unit i will only and only incur variable cost i will not incur a fixed cost here it doesn't matter whether i produce 100 units or 101 units rent paid will be same 
ten thousand rupees. So in short, I will compare with whatever is a cost incurred to produce hundred units along with one not one units along with same concept T U A U M U over there utility concept. Now instead of utility, now we will call it as cost. So marginal cost formula if output is continuous, our output is T C N minus T C. If output is not continuous, M C is equals to change in total cost divided by formula remains same. Instead of U, we are calling it as C. Here it is a cost. Now let us identify the total cost of producing one not one. Total cost of producing. Okay, I will calculate it here. T C of one not one. Total fixed cost plus total variable cost. Fixed cost will be ten thousand rent. Irrespective of output, whether it is ten thousand or one hundred or one not one units, variable cost for producing hundred units was ten thousand. One unit is hundred, so it will be ten thousand hundred. What is it? Ten thousand. So what is the total cost of producing one not one? Twenty thousand one hundred. Total cost of producing hundred units is twenty thousand. One not one units. Twenty thousand one hundred. What is the difference of hundred rupee? That is only and only because of variable cost. That means M C changes due to change in variable cost. What is it? M C changes due to change in. And also in utility concept we discuss T U is cumulative of what M U same way M C changes only due to change in variable cost clear so this was the basic example which I have taken where I explained about fixed cost variable cost and also total cost total cost is a combination of total fixed plus total like this we might be having multiple fixed cost and multiple variable cost everything put together. Say for example, salary to employees, whether he works less or whether he work more, every month you should pay him a fixed amount of salary. So you can't avoid it. Even that is unavoidable. Another example, electricity charges. If I'm producing more, I need to pay more electricity. That is variable. If I'm producing less, electricity charges will be less. Like this, multiple fixed cost will be there and multiple variable cost will be there in a commodity based on that. By combining everything, what is the total cost formula? Total fixed cost plus total variable cost. Now, by using the same formula, what is total cost? Total fixed cost plus total. Can I identify total fixed cost? Definitely yes. From total cost, if we remove variable cost, it will only remain with fixed cost. Same way, if I need to only identify variable cost from total cost, if we remove total fixed cost, that will only and only get me. Total variable cost. What was average cost formula? It was total cost divided by quantity. What was marginal cost formula? T C N minus T C. And this was when output is continuous. Suppose if output is not continuous, change in T C by change in quantity. Clear? This is what we have just understood with the basic examples. Chalo, let's get started. What exactly are these eight important types of a cost? Number one. Fixed cost. What is fixed cost? All those dash expenditure, which are unavoidable in nature, irrespective of output. When we say irrespective, even your output can be zero or any number of units. Say ten thousand, one lakh, or any number of units. Fixed cost remains same. It doesn't matter whatever is the output. So it will be parallel to which axis? X axis. T F C will be parallel to X axis. The second type of a cost is. Variable cost. What is this variable cost? Those costs which changes due to change in. If output increases, variable cost will also. If output decreases, variable cost will. In this, there were two concept. One, when proportionate changes equal. Proportionate changes. That means for every one more extra unit, we are incurring a variable cost of only hundred, hundred, hundred. Even in my example, if I need to produce just one unit, hundred rupee raw material cost. Two units, two hundred. Three units. Four units, five units. If I am not even producing anything, will I have a variable cost? No. This is what proportionate change is equal. Every single time, I am only incurring a raw material expenditure of rupees hundred. In such a case, variable cost will be upward sloping straight line curve starting from origin. Starting from origin. But every time, proportionate change will not be equal. 
the general nature of variable cost curve is inverted yes inverted why because proportionate change will not be equal observe one unit 100 two units is 220 it is not 200 three units is 380 it is not 300 four units is 550 it is not 400 five units is 750 it is not 500 say now proportionate change is not equal that is the reason why variable cost is dash in shape inverted yes in shape why is it inverted s in shape now theory of production gets interlinked due to law of returns to scale this law of returns to scale is production function under in production function there are two types short run and long run due to long run production function variable cost is inverted s in shape and it has got three stages irs increasing returns to scale constant returns to scale decreasing returns to scale this is similar to like relatively elastic relatively inelastic and unitary elastic relatively elastic was more proportionate change relatively inelastic less proportionate change unitary elastic same proportionate change over there price and demand but here we consider input and output suppose if input is increasing if input is increasing at 20 percentage say output Output is increasing by 50 percentage that means input is less output is more that is called as more proportionate change IRS suppose if input is increasing by 20 percentage even output is also increasing by same 20 percentage same proportionate change constant returns to scale last if input is increasing by 20 percentage output is increasing just by some 10 percentage that is less proportionate change clear irs crs and drs now because of such operations of irs crs and drs see there this is input this is output irs input is less output is more crs whatever is the input same level is the output drs input is more but output is due to the operations of irs crs and drs variable cost is dash in shape inverted yes in shape suppose if we are operating only and only in CRS, constant returns to scale, input also 10%, output also 10%, input also 20%, output also. Variable cost curve is upward sloping straight line curve. It is not just when proportionate change is equal, even if we are operating only and only in case of constant returns to scale, variable cost will be upward sloping straight line curve. Clear? So next, types of variable cost the very first one is semi variable cost the best example is auto rickshaw in bangalore especially for the first two kilometer we travel we have to pay how much 30 rupee if you travel beyond two kilometer meter starts ticking and we need to pay according to the meter how much of a distance we travel that means to some extent cost will be beyond which it starts varying depending upon output or usage best example was auto rickshaw that is called as semi variable cost what is it second one stair step variable cost every additional expenditure will be uniform i bought one chips packet sir one chips packet is 10 rupee second chips packet another 10 more rupee third chips packet another like this every additional expenditure will be uniform clear that is called as stair step variable cost so how many types of variable cost is there two types semi variable and stair step variable cost and that will bring us to the third type of a cost that is as the name itself is saying total it is a combination of total fixed and total and see there there is a mistake in the table what is that mistake whenever output is zero when we are not even producing anything will we have a fixed cost yes rent 10,000 rupee doesn't matter whether I produce or don't produce we have to pay assuming my rent is 100 rupee in this case just an example but my variable cost is going to be zero unless and until if i don't produce anything my variable cost will not be there but total cost is a combination of fixed and variable that means when output is zero total cost cannot be zero that will be equal to fixed cost that means when output is 0 tc is equals to tfc this is the main logic here clear 
and as we already know that variable cost curve starts from the origin because only if we produce anything then only we have a variable cost if not we don't have a variable cost whether we produce or don't produce we have a still fixed cost present to some extent so total cost will start from the point where total fixed cost starts because when output is zero whatever is the tfc that will be the tc and observe is proportionate change equal in variable cost no 100 200 300 like this is it same if proportionate change is not equal variable cost curve will be dash in shape inverted else in shape for that we will we are just adding fixed cost so even total cost will become inverted s in shape variable cost starts from the origin but total cost starts from the point where total fixed cost will start because when output is zero tc is equals to tfc clear this is the concept of total cost now let us enter to the most important topic of the chapter that is average cost what do you mean by average cost it is a cost incurred to produce unit of output if i am producing 100 units for 20000 rupees simple 20000 by 100 that is rupees 200 on every single unit that is what is average cost meaning is very simple but types of average cost is the confusion if my cost to produce every single unit is rupees 200 out of this 200 how much is fixed cost present and how much is variable cost suppose if for my bench manufacturing for producing 100 units say variable cost is 80 rupee fixed cost is 120 rupee just an assumption like this we need to identify what is the proportion of fixed cost in every single unit and what is the proportion of variable cost in every single unit so there are two types of average cost number one average fixed cost number two average variable cost what was the formula for average cost total cost by quantity same way average fixed cost is equals to total fixed cost by quantity average variable cost is total variable cost divided by quantity any doubts now see there my total fixed cost assuming it is 100 rupee i am producing more and more number of units my output is increasing what is the formula tfc by quantity 100 by 10 10 100 by 20 5 100 by 40 2.5 100 by 50 2 100 by 100 100 by 1000 0 0.1 100 by 10000 0 0.01 that means when output keeps on increasing when output keeps on average fixed cost keeps on but it will never and ever become zero it will never and ever become at least some minute element at least some fractional element of fixed cost will be present but average fixed cost can be infinite when afc can never become zero it goes almost nearing to the x-axis but it will never touch x-axis it will never touch can you see there it is going almost nearing to the x-axis but it will never touch x-axis but afc can be infinite when when output is zero when we are not even producing anything any numerical divided by zero is a math error that is nothing but infinite this is how question comes that is why i said welcome to ca where if you make a smallest mistake then what do you mean by ca come again we love your answer by mistake if you do inky pinky ponky on exam day on a result day you are monkey and your friend is winky so kindly remember inky pinky ponky will not work here only logics will work afc will never become zero but afc can be infinite afc can be clear when output keeps on increasing average fixed cost keeps on decreasing so if at all we are producing less number of units just one single unit that entire 100 rupees has to be borne by the one single unit if output increases average fixed cost keeps on decreasing next average variable cost proportion of variable cost on every single unit so initially average variable cost will decrease it will become minimum it will become and then avc starts increasing that means average variable cost is a j shape curve it is a sir how it is a j shape curve how come it will decrease first how it will become minimum and then how it will increase let's take an example i will say 
I will appoint laborers to my organization every one hour work. Every. I will pay them 100 rupees as wages. I will pay them 100 rupees as wages. What is the example now? I will appoint the labor. Every one hour the labor is going to work. I will pay them how much? 100 rupees. Okay, I appointed first person. In one hour he produced 10 benches. Now I need to pay him a wages of how much? 100. Okay, I appointed second fellow. Now both of them are working together and they are producing 25 benches in one hour. How much wages should I pay? Because two of them are there working for one one hour. I appointed third fellow. Now all three put together they are producing wages payable 300. Now comes the formula. What is average variable cost formula? Total variable cost divided by variable cost is wages paid 100, 200, 300. Output is nothing but whatever they are producing. 100 by 10, 10, 200 by 25, 8, 300 by 33. 9.09. See there, from 10 it decreased it to 8. It has become minimum. Then again it started to increase. That is what. Initially it is going to decrease. It becomes minimum and AVC starts increasing. And what is the nature of average variable cost curve? Now, why is it J in shape? Because of law of variable proportion. Production function under. Just few minutes back we discussed production function under long run. That is when variable cost is inverted yes in shape. That is law of returns to scale production function under long run. Now, why is average variable cost J in shape? Because of law of variable proportion. This is production function under, even this has got three stages, SIR, SDR, SNR. Same to same, meaning observe it, output and input relationship here. Output increases dash proportionate, more proportionate of input. If input is 20 percentage, output is 50 percentage. Next. SDR, we don't have a constant here, straight away decreasing, output increases but dash proportionate, less proportionate, if input is 20 percentage, output is 10 percentage, now comes the Kahani matrix, see there, after certain point, output is not going to increase, rather output will decrease, irrespective of, if you observe in stage 1 and stage 2, output is, but in stage 3, output is, after what? Uh, now we are interested to identify which is that certain point, which is that. So listen to this very carefully. How many stages are there in law of variable proportion? SIR, SDR, SNR. In stage 1, average fixed cost is also decreasing and average variable cost is also decreasing. Henceforth, even average cost will decrease. Like how total cost is a combination of total fixed cost plus total variable cost, same way average cost is also a combination of average fixed cost plus due to average fixed cost and average variable cost both are decreasing, AC will also decrease by end of stage 1, AVC becomes minimum, AVC becomes, now stage 2 is the twister in a tail, observe this very carefully, in stage 2, AFC continues to fall but at a greater rate slowly AVC starts increasing. That means the fall in AFC is faster, the rise in AVC is slower. Henceforth, AC continues to decrease until AC becomes minimum. And remember, when AC becomes minimum, AFC and AVC both are equal. Both are. This is what we call it as certain point. What is that certain point? When AC is minimum, when AC is, AFC will become equal to, this is what we call it as certain point. Beyond the certain point, now if an organization starts producing, if the organization starts, AFC no doubt it is decreasing, but now it has reached decimals like 0 0.1, 0 0.01, but AVC rapidly starts Henceforth, average cost will increase. That means your per unit cost of production starts increasing. Now, you tell me any manufacturer for it matter, would he wish to produce at a minimum cost or increasing cost? Minimum cost. So, any manufacturer for it matter, he wishes to operate in SDR, where AC becomes minimum and AVF, AFC and AVC both are equal. Beyond that, if they start producing, output will not increase, rather output should decrease because we are costs are increasing clear that is what is a certain point see there 
Why is average cost U in shape? This is because of AFC and AVC. In stage 1, AFC, AVC both are decreasing. Henceforth, AC is decreasing. In stage 2, what is happening? Here, AVC starts slowly increasing in a lesser proportion. But AFC is falling in a greater proportion. Henceforth, AC continues to decline until it reaches. Whenever AC becomes minimum, just now I explained. When AC reaches minimum, what happens? AFC and AVC both becomes equal. If we start operating in a third stage, that is more than certain stage, AFC no doubt continues to fall. But AVC starts increasing in a dash proportion. So, automatically AC starts increasing. So, this is the reason. Clear? So, this is the most important graph. This is where most of the questions will come in the exam. So, why is average variable cost J in shape? Because of law of variable proportion. That is production function under short run. How many stage? SIR, SDR, SNR. Especially in this SNR, we need to identify which is that certain point beyond which output will not increase. Rather, output will decrease. Which is that certain point when AC becomes minimum, AFC and AVC both are equal. Clear? Next comes our most beautiful concept, Tata is shell. This is another shortcut where most of the time you people will go wrong and in exam your ICI likes this question and one question will compulsorily come from this area. What is the concept name? Rate of increase or rate of decrease. So I explained theory of production and theory of cost concept both together if you remember. What is that? This upper part, this represents average product AP. This lower one represents AC. So, I am explaining the concept of rate of increase or rate of decrease. That means which increases faster or which decreases faster. Now, we are explaining relationship between AC and MC. What is it? AC and relationship between AC and. So, when AC decreasing, what will happen? When AC becomes minimum, what will happen? When AC increases, what will happen? Same way, even before explaining theory of production, I also explained that concepts also. Whenever average product is increasing, what will happen? When average product becomes maximum, what will happen? When average product is decreasing, what will happen? Clear? Now understand. When AC is decreasing, what is the logic? Average cost will decrease faster than marginal cost. AC will be greater than MC. That means fall in average cost is faster than marginal cost. When average cost becomes minimum, AC will be equal to Kahanime twisters. There is one more logic which connects chapter 4. If this is AC curve, MC curve will always cut AC curve from below and minimum. What is it? MC cuts AC from point number 1 below and minimum of AC, minimum of AC, that's the reason why in stage 3, when AC is increasing, understand, MC has already become minimum and MC is increasing. At that level, it is going to cut AC from its below. That means MC is already increasing. Later on, AC starts increasing. Henceforth, whenever AC is increasing, whenever AC is, MC increases faster than AC. MC increases faster than and remember MC curve cuts AC curve from always and always below and minimum of MC. So, what is the logic? What is the logic now when AC is decreasing? AC is decreasing. AC decreases faster than MC. When AC is minimum, AC is equal to MC and we know that AC curve and MC curve will be equal at the minimum point of AC. And MC cuts AC always from below and it will cut from the minimum point of AC. Which cuts? MC cuts AC from its below and minimum. Below and. And stage 3, when AC is increasing, AC is. MC will increase faster than AC. Now let us come to theory of production concept. What is that? Whenever AP is increasing, what is the logic? MP increases faster than when AP is maximum, AP equals. Uh, this is where everyone will go wrong. When AP is decreasing, what will happen? 
एम टी विल डिक्रीज फास्टर देन ए पी बट मोस्ट ऑफ दम गेट कंफ्यूज सर डायग्नल ऑपोजिट एवरेज कॉन्सेप्ट वॉज ग्रेटर सो यर ऑल्सो एवरेज कॉन्सेप्ट शुड बी ग्रेटर रॉन्ग एंड आई ऑल्सो थॉट यू द शॉर्टकट वॉट इज अ शॉर्टकट ओनली एंड ओनली वेन ए सी इज डिक्रीजिंग ओनली एंड ओनली वेन ए सी इज एवरेज कॉन्सेप्ट इज ग्रेटर देन मार्जिनल कॉन्सेप्ट एवरेज कॉन्सेप्ट इज ग्रेटर देन इन रिमेनिंग थ्री कॉर्नर इन रिमेनिंग थ्री मार्जिनल कॉन्सेप्ट इज ऑलवेज ग्रेटर देन एवरेज कॉन्सेप्ट दट द रीजन इवन इन माई मटीरियल ओनली वेन ए सी इज डिक्रीजिंग वी हैव ए अंडर लाइन ऑफ डिफरेंट कलर वी हैव टू रिमेंबर दट only when ac is decreasing ac is greater than mc in remaining three corners marginal concept is greater than average concept clear understood now let us go to your most favorite topic that is lac and sac long run average cost and short run average cost lac long run average cost is called as planning curve least cost combination curve or envelope curve SAC curve is also called as plant curve. First, let us understand SAC, and then we go for LAC. As I always give the same example for this concept, which is easy to understand. I have a two floors building, where in the lower floor I have a smaller machinery. In the first floor I have a medium size machinery. In the second floor I have a large size machinery. Say the small size machinery has a capacity to produce thousand units. Medium size machinery has a capacity to produce. 2000 units large size machinery has a capacity to produce 3000 units this is nothing but plant size 1 small plant sac 1 this is sac 2 sac 3 like this infinite capacity will be there with the firm it's up to them to buy it so in my example there are only three plant size suppose i got an order to produce 500 units how much in which plant size should i produce small medium or large and if i'm producing at small plant my cost is also minimum cost is also okay my order size increase now it became 700 now it became now i'm at point a now i should decide should i still continue in a smaller plant or should i shift it to a medium size plant what if in a future demand still increases okay what if it becomes like 900 now if i'm still at plant 1 my cost will increase i will go to point n suppose if i'm shifting to medium size plant it will come for point m cost will decrease as expected demand increase it to 900 now i have been shifted to medium size plant so that cost is decreasing and then automatically my demand came up to 1200 1000 when i am producing 1200 in a medium size plant my cost is minimum again one more decision making authority came my demand increase it to 1800 should i still continue in a small medium one or should i shift to a Large one. Again, in future demand will increase. Say my demand came to two thousand five hundred, two thousand per day. I need to produce two thousand five hundred benches. Now I need to operate in a large plant that is SAC three. Like this, I will be shifting on my plant size based upon my production criteria. Production criteria. Next comes LAC. Like this, an organization has a multiple plant size. See there, SAC one, SAC two, SAC three, SAC four. But I should always operate at the even in long run. So long run is called as my long run planning is decided based on short term plant size. Now say I need to produce five thousand units. I know in a one year I am going to produce five thousand benches. So in order to produce five thousand benches, in which plant capacity if I produce my cost of production is going to be minimum. Okay, I decided that is SAC four. If I am producing at SAC four for five thousand units, my cost of production will become minimum. Not just in a short run, even in a long run. That is, in short, my long run planning is decided based on short term plant size, short term. And observe, LAC curve is also U shaped curve. LAC curve is no doubt tangent. That black color dotted lines is a tangency point. But LAC is not always tangent to SAC at their minimum. At their only at point M, only at point that is at SAC four. LAC and LAC both are tangent at their minimum point. So this is also called as optimum plant size. What is it? Optimum plant size, or it is also called as least 
cost combination and production function under long run is called as law of returns to scale. How many stages are there? Three stages. IRS, CRS. When we are operating in IRS, observe this very carefully. LAC is no doubt tangent to SAC, but not always at the minimum, towards the left hand side. That means when SAC is also decreasing towards the left hand side, it is tangent. But if you see the least point or the minimum point, see this is where the minimum point of SAC1 is there. This is SAC2. This is SAC3. The blue color dotted lines is the minimum point of that SAC1, 2 and 3. But is it tangent at the minimum point? No. Towards which side it is tangent? Towards the left side. And here it is towards the right side. But only and only at point M, at the 5000 level of units, LAC and SAC both are tangent at the respective minimum. Henceforth, it is also called as optimum plant size. Until optimum plant size. This is what is the most important logic here. Until optimum plant size, this is called as economies of scale. What is it? Economies of beyond optimum plant size, that is beyond XM, if at all the organization is producing. We ourselves don't know how much we are producing. Is it 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, 20,000, 25,000? Don't know. We need more and more plant, more and more raw material, more and more manpower. We ourselves don't know. We are over exploiting resources. This is called as this economies of scale. Clear? This is what the concept of short run average cost and long run average cost. Crux is very simple. In order to decide for a long run planning to produce at a least cost level, first we have to decide our plant size. I decided I will produce 5000 units in one year. In order to produce 5000 units, in which plant capacity, if we produce, my cost is going to be minimum. Only if you are operating at that respected plant capacity, not just in short run, even in Long run cost of production is going to be minimum. Clear? So already I have given up these notes. You people have went through it once. I know that you people have read it once. Same. Theoretical explanation, I am not marking it here. Whatever I just explained, same things are given here. Clear? So this is along with explanation. Point x, point x1, x2, whatever. I have taken the numerical value as 500, 700, 900. Same things I have given in the form of x, x1, x2. But these nodes are important, especially from this part. This is where we will be explaining about long run. And these nodes are important. Clear? So go through this material once. Whatever I just explained, same to same concepts will be given over there. Clear? So with this respect, let's go to the next type of cost. That is marginal cost. As I have already explained this. What is marginal cost? It is a cost incurred to produce one extra or... One additional unit of output. One extra or one additional unit of output. That is called as marginal cost. And marginal cost curve is U in shape. As of now, just understand that. In chapter 4, again, we will explain firm equilibrium. Only we consider second part of the graph. That's the reason. Just now I was explaining AC curve and MC curve. I was considering only second part of the graph. Only towards this right side. I never considered this left side of the graph. That's the reason MC curve, I used to write it as J shape. Not as U shape. That we will explain in chapter 4. When output is continuous, what the formula? When output is not continuous, what will be the formula? Already we have done that. So, with that respect, let's go to the sunk cost and opportunity cost. What is it? Sunk cost and opportunity cost. What is sunk cost? I gave that example. You went to a movie. You didn't like a movie. You will come out. If you give back the ticket, will you get back the money? Cost once incurred which cannot be recovered back. That is called as sunk cost. What is opportunity cost? That recruitment example which I gave. You got selected to one of the company in your campus interviews. If you would have selected that, you will get say 3 lakh rupees salary per year. But you don't want to work under anyone. Eh, why should I work under anyone? Let me start my own business. Okay, you started. Now you are earning 2.5 lakh. 2.5 lakh a year. But without doing any of this risk, if you would have gone to an employment with that company, you will earn how much? That means you are sacrificing how much? 50,000 rupees. That sacrificing whatever you are making, that 50,000, that is called as opportunity cost. 
so it is a cost of next best opportunity forego you would have been selected for multiple company one will pay 1.5 lakh one will pay 3 lakh rupee definitely i will choose 3 lakh rupee why will i select with 1.5 lakh so i will compare only with next best alternative i will only compare with next best alternative which i have forego which i have now in this case in this example you are foregoing 50000 rupee can you show in your books of accounts in your business p and l account credit side if i would have worked in so and so company i will get 50000 can i show opportunity cost cannot be recorded in books of accounts see there it is the cost of next best opportunity foregone in short opportunity selected minus opportunity and this paragraph is most important this is where exam questions have been asked why is this concept of opportunity cost arises because of the fundamental premises of economics resources are and we can put them into multiple uses but not simultaneously that means you people selected to do your own business rather than that you could have been gone to employment but at the same time you can't work in some company and also start your own business by selecting one you have to reject another so because resources human resources are scarce in nature we don't have an abundance so any economic resources are scarce that's the reason concept of opportunity cost will arise so this is what sunken opportunity cost clear so outlay i will explain it in the later part first understand accounting and so this was the twister in the entire concept this is where most of them went wrong even in the class when i was explaining what is accounting cost those monetary expenditures which can be recorded in the books of accounts and this is from a dash point of view sir no confusion simple whatever expenditure we have incurred which can be shown in the books of accounts that is accountant cost that is from a accountant point of view simple but the confusion starts only when we start reading economic cost because we consider those which can be recorded plus recorded in books of accounts and it is from a dash point of view which can be shown plus which cannot be shown both is considered from a economist point of view why bloody rascal you started your own business you are earning 2.5 lakh rupee shut your business and go and do the employment without even taking risk you will earn 3 lakh rupee why are you sacrificing 50000 only if you can able to earn greater than 3 lakh rupee then you do the business these kind of analysis these kind of decision making will be taken only when we consider which can be recorded plus so that's the reason in the economic subject we consider economist point of view not from a accountant point of view so economic cost is used for a decision making purpose in short which can be recorded plus which cannot be recorded that means accounting cost can be recorded opportunity cost cannot be recorded so what is economic cost accounting cost plus and there is a different names for accounting and economic cost accounting cost is also called as which can be expressed which can be or it is a direct cost it is a cost incurred economic cost is a implicit which cannot be expressed or indirect cost so either we can also call economic cost as which can be expressed plus which cannot be expressed implicit plus explicit if not accounting plus opportunity now this is where the another two concept which is out of your eight important things explicit and implicit many a times the questions has come only two major differences are there listen to this carefully in case of explicit which can be expressed which we are incurring a real monetary expenditure so it is a actual monetary expenditure incurred while hiring a factors of production like land labor capital and organization where we are going to pay them that means in the form of wages rent interest like this we are going to pay them the money is going outside the business so it is a dash concept payment concept clear and it is from a accountant point of view which can be shown in the firms books of accounts okay clear now comes the confusion economist point of view this is not payment concept these are receipt concept in my own building i am conducting business in my books of accounts i am showing it as rent that means rent receivable for self i am working in my own organization i am drawing a salary for self these all are not actual monetary expenditure money is not going outside money is within us only only for a decision making purpose comparison purpose we are analyzing like what boss you are doing business in this building instead of you doing 
if you give it to someone you will get a rent you are sacrificing that rent and then you are doing a business so whatsoever that you are sacrificing you should be able to recover like what suppose if you can able to find the same premises somewhere for 8000 and all go there you leave this building to someone you will earn 10000 you pay that 8000 there and you will make 2000 profit in a thin line that is economist point of view so it is like receivable for self whatever you are sacrificing are you able to recover that that is what is most important so economic cost is a receipt concept that is not a payment concept for whatever we are using a factors in a firm land labor capital and organization see there it is a non actual monetary expenditure but it is the cost to owned by the firm whatever we are owning land labor capital organization for that whatever cost that we will incur are we recovering that or not that is what is most important and it is not recorded in the firms books of accounts it is a dash concept payment concept these are payment received by the producer for self supplied services this is what is explicit and implicit cost is yes. yeah that is from accountant point of view you are analyzing i sacrifice ma'am i wanted to do the business but i have lost my job let me say i didn't even accept at that job which could easily fetch me 3 lakh i started to do my own business that means my intention is at least i should make 3 lakh whatever i sacrificed even that should be recovered so in reality can you show whatever you have sacrificed in books of accounts you are only analyzing that for a decision making purpose same way my own building i am only using it suppose instead of doing it for myself if i have given for someone for a rent whatever i get at least i should recover that see i cannot show this in books of accounts it is only for a comparison and decision making purposes that is why economic cost only for decision making clear so this is what is accounting and economic cost explicit and implicit explicit is payment concept implicit is receipt concept explicit is a actual monetary expenditure implicit is a not actual monetary expenditure clear and that brings us to last but not the least that is incremental cost what is marginal cost it is a cost incurred to produce one extra unit or one additional unit of output one extra or one additional unit of output here it is one extra batch of output not just one additional it is one suppose i produced 100 benches in january cost was 20000 same 100 bench in february cost is 25000 extra is 5000 why did that 5000 extra come because of business decisions or management decision why we could have replaced a machinery worn out machinery or we could have bought any new production facility or acquired some new set of client we have changed something in an organization because of change in business if there is any additional cost incurred that is called as incremental cost incremental clear so these are the 10 types of cost other than eight i explained explicit and implicit another two more types private cost and social cost what is it cost and social cost what is it i used to give that example in my manufacturing yard i am using some polish to let me say make sure that wood is looking very beautiful and amazing all that waste elements chemicals i am discharging it into river what happens because of that river is getting polluted that water is no more fit for drinking purposes bathing purposes or swimming purpose number of fishes in that river is going low the fisherman is unable to catch the fish because of my production there is a side effect in the economy that is called as externalities that is called as side effects when i am selling this furniture in the market i am only considering my cost of production and adding the profit element and selling but i have ignored that externalities side effects to the society so whatever my primary cost is there to produce if i also consider externality that becomes social cost that is a cost to society cost to so primary cost plus externality put together is a social cost that is a cost to society for whatever side effects that i am creating even that is accounted so these are the 12 types of cost and see there there is something called as outlay cost that is as simple as accounting cost it is a actual financial expenditure incurred at some point of time and they are also recorded in books of accounts it is a actual expenditure in the name of wages material rent and interest clear so this is what is theory of cost and then comes one of the most important topic that is shutdown concept is very simple 
when a firm is unable to recover back their variable cost when a firm is unable to recover back their then a firm is said to be in so there are two kinds of shutdown how many kinds of shutdown one short run shutdown second one so short run shutdown is also called as temporary shutdown what is it long run shutdown is called as permanent shutdown short term is a temporary shutdown long term is a permanent shutdown so what is the condition for short term and long term short term shutdown when the total revenue is lesser than or equal to total variable cost or we can also call it as average revenue is lesser than or equal to average variable cost boss we are unable to recover your variable cost so better don't produce it if you don't produce you will only incur fixed cost irrespective of output you will incur fixed cost and losses only to the extent of fixed cost but if you produce boss you are unable to recover your variable cost so better for a time being don't produce this happens during the contraction phase of business cycle when the economy is not performing well next long run shutdown that is when a firm is incurring losses in a long run that is when average revenue is lesser than average cost when a firm incurs a losses in a long run for subsequent years then you have to permanently close down your business so this is what the concepts of theory of cost clear any doubt so we are done with theory of cost now let us start with theory of production so chota unit and the most easiest topic theory of production so totally there are three segments in it one is human wants one is so what is human wants all those dtm what is dtm desire taste and motives of a human being is called as human wants and human wants is of three types number one necessary number two comfort number three luxury what is this necessaries again it is further subclassified into three kinds number one basic necessaries of life that is food clothing and shelter second one necessaries of efficiency all such tools and equipments which is used to create efficiency that means shashikiran now i am teaching you people i need laptop i need projector i need all this internet connection these are tools and equipments by using that i am creating efficiency so that i am earning income i am earning because of that income i will satisfy my human wants without paying a price i cannot buy goods and services in order to pay the price i need to earn in order to earn i am using tools and for a tailor stitching machine is a tools and equipments for a teacher like this laptop projector bench every facility is a tools and equipment last but not the least social necessary whether you like it or don't like it for the sake of society you have to follow after marriage women has to wear mangal sutra all such things whether you like it or don't like it you should definitely follow that is social necessary second one comfort which gives better level of satisfaction that same example you have participated in athletic meet at the finishing line shashikiran is holding a glass of water and standing ah uh, good sir instead of glass of water glass of juice ah uh, that is what better level of satisfaction last but not the least what is it luxury all unnecessary spendings of a human extravagant spendings of a human is called as luxury three kinds of luxury harmful luxury harmless luxury and depends luxury what is this harmful no doubt which increases social status but it has affected on human health best example ac refrigerator during the summer when you open that fridge that cool breeze that comes in, no ah oh, sir sakada gide that is what chlorofluorocarbon affects on respiratory system that is harmful for human health next one harmless luxury you have a bungalow that will not harm you unless and until you go and fall from the top so like this i have one more so it is no doubt a luxury which increases social status but it will not affect on human and last one defense luxury not cctv camera and all this is which can be readily converted into liquid cash gold diamond precious metals which can be readily converted as what liquid cash this is where exam questions have come many a times defense luxury clear next characteristics of human wants are you guys humans do you wants limited or unlimited can you satisfy all your wants and when you are buying a cell phone will you just use a cell phone back case beko tempered glass headphone recharge sim card competitive as well as complementary one after the other it sprouts up and you will use it together next want are recurring in nature one after the other one after the other it keeps on coming want varies by time place and person sir bere or jothe idaga bere cafe coffee day bekidor jothe local tea angade 
especially for boys this example works good in the class and varies with time place as well as person next habits and customs one becomes habits and customs last but not the least it affects because of only if katrina kf comes and holds that slice bottle and the mango droplets are coming then i feel like having slice mango juice if not who will think so it also varies with advertisement so this is what is human ah uh, next comes another important area what is it ah uh, what is production your old dialogue is there right what is production conversion of raw material into finished good bilta vadegalu conversion of raw material into finished goods andre what is production it is the process of adding utility to the subject matter to make, make it more satisfiable to a human wants not every time converting input into an output is called as human wants sorry production uh, it is not always converting inputs into a output we need to create that utility that satisfaction element into the commodity i used to give that idli vada example you came to your college canteen early morning you are feeling hungry you went to the college canteen ordered idli vada bakwas taste is horrible next day will you go and have definitely no you will go to the hotel outside taste is amazing no doubt in both the places the batter was converted into idli vada input has been converted into output but where did you like the taste hotel that utility was present in a hotel food not in your college canteen same way it is the process of adding utility to the subject matter to satisfy human wants so here we are converting input into a output input refers to factors of production land labor capital and we are trying to create a utility by using an input to satisfy the human wants so that creation of utility is through four alternative way number one form utility by changing it from one shape to another shape sir i bought a cloth i am giving it to a tailor i am stitching it let me say after that i am wearing it as a material or let me say shirt or a pant that is i am converting from one form to another form place utility especially agricultural goods farmer is going to grow all his output in a farm land he gets to the market and then we buy it from one place to another place by shifting it we are adding a utility third one time utility first example rain water we store it in a dams bridges canals and whenever the time comes whenever we need it we will use it by storing a commodity and more using it at a more appropriate time best example my material you might not use it daily at the time of examination definitely you will use it you are storing it and then you are using it last but not the least ownership or possessional utility best example your college library books now owner of that book is a college library books but who is having a possession student either you should have a possession of it to utilize or you should be the owner of it to use it so ownership or possessional utility clear and next comes factors of land labor capital so land free gift of nature that is not created by a human that is a free gifts of nature land is perfectly we can't expand the land or we can't contract the land whatever the supply of land is there it is completely inelastic and it is indestructible we cannot destroy the physical land but the fertility of a land can be destroyed hiroshima nagasaki best example next immobile we can't move a land from one place to differs in quality definitely the soil quality is different in different places differs in if i need to buy the piece of a land if it is different priced in a different locality city it is highly priced rural it is less priced primary and passive factors of production anything and everything has to be created on a land space that is primary factor but without human effort land will not create everything on its own that is passive human efforts are required that is passive factor primary factor anything and everything can it be a building or anything has to be created on a land so primary and passive factors of production next second one is labor all kinds of human efforts all kinds of either a physical effort or a intellectual effort which results in production what is production process of adding utility and for which dash is paid monetary reward is paid now shashikiran is teaching for students that is a intellectual effort not a physical effort that is leading to what production assuming and for which i also get rewards called as salary or my payment monetary rewards are paid characteristics labor and laborer are inseparable shashikiran and his teaching skills are inseparable when i am teaching advait kids i am only selling my skills i am not selling myself to advait so sells only my labor and labor is perishable today as a festival day without taking a class if at all i would have declared holiday then can i use the same time tomorrow 
so today's labor hour if i don't use it that labor is perished we cannot recreate that labor hours next human in i can't work like a machine like 24 bar 7 shashikiran human in nature idiot fellow he has to take rest after some point of time next to differs in like how shashikiran teachers will not be the same with nehal ma'am or maybe with dhanush sir or maybe with pj sir or maybe with any xyz faculty they have their own way of teaching it from one labor to another labor efficiency will change less mobile no doubt we are ready to move but for a shorter distance if anyone calls me from usa and they will say tomorrow come to us and take the class will i go definitely no suppose if anyone calls me from mysore definitely okay boss today i will get into bus 3 hours i will be there yes i am ready to come next labor has less whether i work more or whether i work less whatever is a predetermined salary allocated i get the same salary or oh, last month i didn't work properly but you paid me same salary this month i am working more you should pay me more salary will you get they will say poor daddy labor is in elastic all of a sudden we can't increase the labor or all of a sudden we cannot decrease the supply of labor it takes a time so labor is in elastic so these are the characteristics of labor next third one capital the most important and beautiful meaning all which is used for only both the conditions are satisfied then only it is called as a capital number one it should be created by a man second it should be used for for their production i gave that example self consumed goods and services are not coming under a capital i constructed a building and i am staying there for self that is not leading to further productivity that will not come under a capital and it excludes all free gifts of nature land air water these are free gifts of nature and they are completely excluded completely excluded they will not come under the capital and there are types of capital which is there in icm material i asked you to refer working capital fixed capital floating capital all such things all self explanatory things are that but the most important one was capital formation what is it capital c m u creation mobilization utilization this concept was also called as circular circular flow of i explained it creation will be done by household or individual who will create it household or that means we are working we get a salary do we spend the entire salary a smaller portion is created as a savings where do you keep your savings banks or financial institution either in the name of stocks investments insurance like this banks and financial institutions will collect all the savings created by households and individuals in the name of what in the name of deposits and investment bank deposits or any kind of investment so who will mobilize banks and financial institution after collecting your money bank what will they do they will give it in a form of loans and advances for the whom for all governments corporates and business owners they will borrow the loans and advances so after borrowing the loans and advances what will they do they will put in the business they will produce goods they will sell in the market they earn profit again they pay salary to households or individual again they create savings it will come to bank from bank again it to business owner from business owner to households or individual this is a circuit this is a cycle so this is why we call it a circular flow of creation mobilization utilization c m u creation of savings is done by households or individuals mobilization is by banks and utilization is by government corporates and business houses through the process of c m u household saving is converted as a business investments so this is what the third factors of production that is capital last but not the least what is it organizer that means a owner without a owner other three factors of productions are useless land labor capital he is the one who initiates all the three so he initiates the business enterprises and resource coordination organizer is a person who brings other three factors of production into one common place without him other three factors of production cannot be hired and not just he brings other three factors of production into one common place he will take advantages of changes in dynamic environment my environment keeps on changing two day covid come tomorrow tsunami will come day after tomorrow volcano will come whatever changes will happen according to that he has to do the business such initiative has to be taken by whom entrepreneur or a organizer and not just about it he should always bear a 
uncertainty anything can happen like covid either a profit or either a losses everything has to be borne by a entrepreneur or a owner or a proprietor and he always have to bring in about innovation my people are not ready to buy the same product over and above they should come out with something new best example fair and lovely you will be like shashikiran apply it for 3 weeks fairness meter you will become like ashwara rai like that fairness meter it is not just fair and lovely now it is glow and lovely next it protects you from uv rays same product they are coming out with more and more of innovative way and they are selling to the customers so that is what he has to always come out with inventions and innovation so these are the four factors of production land labor capital and organization so in this particular chapter we first discussed about human wants next we discussed about production and the process of adding utility next we discussed about factors of production this brings us to the most important topic of the chapter that is production function demand function relationship between price and demand same way relationship between input and output is called as production function already explained input refers to factors of production that is land labor capital organization so by using the limited input we need to try to produce maximum output that is what is production function and already a part of it we have discussed production function under short run is called as law of variable proportion production function under long run is called as uh, if you remember i gave an example here say shashikiran is a furniture manufacturer i have a customer one of my old student who will come and give me an order to produce 100 benches how many benches and he asked me to deliver it in one month asked me to deliver it in so what is the order 100 benches what is the time period now I am using inputs. Which are the inputs? Land, labor, capital and organization. By using input, I am trying to produce output. Now, in my organization, for just one month, to produce 100 extra benches, will I change land? Not at all, sir. I will somehow manage to produce in the same land. So, land is not at all changing. Say, labor. My young and energetic laborers, say some five females are there. I will say them, Seema, only this one month, come one hour early or maybe leave one hour extra. Have you not studied law from PJ, sir? You can't force a female to stay after 6 o'clock or ask them to come early. No, we are not ready. Such an unsupportive staff I had. So, I could not extend the work from them. So, I hired, I hired, let me say, two or three people to just work for one month to produce 100 extra benches. Okay, I am changing labor. I am changing, say, capital. Oh, highly impossible. Within the existing machinery, you should deploy one more new machinery. You should invest. Will I? Just for 100 bench. No, not at all. Organization. Oh, Shashikiran cannot balance it. You take any of your competitor as a partner. Will I? Definitely no. Now, I am not changing land. I am not changing capital. I am not changing organization. I only and only changed what? Labor. Clear? Okay. Chalo. I produced 100 benches and I delivered to the customer. He is happy. Next, after three months, he will come out with the good news. What is that? Hello, sir. How are you? Still alive? Yeah. I want 1 lakh benches. How much? 1 lakh benches. Say my production capacity is only 1000 benches in a month. Even if I produce one entire year, only 12,000. But demand us 1 lakh bench. Okay, I will ask. When do you need? Sir, 1 year. How much? One year is a time period. Now, one lakh bench within the existing land space. Can I produce one lakh bench? I definitely have to change land within this very unsupportive female staff. Can I produce one lakh bench? Even labor will be changed. Capital within the existing plant and machinery. Can I produce? Even I have to invest more and more. Organization say. Shashikiran himself will be the owner. Somehow he will beg, borrow, steal money from someone. He will only be the owner and he will be investing in the business. So, I am not changing. Owner is same. If you observe, in case of long run, one year time, I am changing land, I am changing labor, I am changing capital. Only organization is fixed. But in short run, just one month, 100 bench. I only changed labor. Rest, everything remains same. This is where the crux of the story is. In short run, fixed factors are more in short run only and only labor was variable variable factors are less fixed factors are but in long run one year time is there anything and everything can be changed i can vary anything so variable factors are fixed factors are 
clear so production function under short run is called as law of how many stages are there which are those increasing returns to scale constant returns to scale decreasing returns to scale law of returns to scale also has got three stages which are those ah very beautiful students i am writing vice versa and many of them are repeating after me how oh, how oh, high concentration you have what is that stage of increasing return stage of diminishing return now uh, here increasing returns to scale constant returns to scale negative returns to scale clear uh, decreasing returns to scale that means only in short run we have a negative factor in long run if there is a negative factor that means losses then a firm is said to be in a shutdown just now we discussed so in long run we cannot have a negative return only in short run clear so remember production function short run 1 month 100 bench long run 1 lakh bench 1 year at time clear let us discuss on law of variable proportion that is production function under short run production function under impact on output is due to change in some factors of production out of land labor capital organization only labor got changed many other things remains constant okay let us make one more beautiful assumption as you observe here very clearly where is that example pa ah organization didn't change whether it is a short term or whether it is a shashikiran himself was a owner accepted so we'll make one thing we will ignore organization it doesn't matter short run or long run shashikiran itself is a owner so we only consider there are three factors of production how many factors of production that is assumption number 1 we are considering there are only dash factors of production three factors of production land labor capital out of this only my unsupportive stuff labor only them i changed only labor is a variable factor labor is a land and capital was a and point number 4 and 5 this is important and whether it is a short term or long term that remains same technology remains what happens if technology changes supply will increase productivity will increase i need not change my laborers at all within the existing labor only increase the technology i can produce 100 benches but i am considering technology is not changing that is remaining constant and there is no perfect substitutes for fixed factors that means land and capital as no other option i will not get the land or capital for a lesser or cheaper cost somewhere else it is same it is same we are making this assumption and then only we are understanding this concepts clear so what is law of variable proportion that is production function under short run where impact on output is only due to change in of production and how many assumptions are there five assumption which are those five assumption we assume there are three factors of production land and capital is a fixed factor labor is a variable factor technology remains no perfect substitutes for so how many stages are there in law of variable proportion which are those three stages number one sir already we have discussed the meaning where it increases more proportionate output increases more proportionate of input in sdr output increases but the most important is snr what is that after certain output will not increase rather output starts decreasing already we have discussed that certain point which was that certain point when ac becomes minimum afc and avc both are equal afc and avc both are there is also one more meaning to this i will explain this meaning in the later part this green color underlined one i will explain in the later part of the chapter now observe this carefully i am appointing laborers to my organization in my manufacturing unit i appointed first person i appointed first person he is producing 20 benches in a day second person both of them put together they are producing 50 third person all three put together fourth one all four put together fifth one all five put together Sixth one, all all six put together, all seven put together, all eight put together. Okay, let us also identify average product and marginal product. Output of labor is continuous, so M P is going to have a first formula. What is that? T P N minus T P N minus one. Instead of U, instead of C. Now theory of production we are considering it as T P. Clear? 
Now, what is the formula of AP? AP is equals to total product divided by quantity. What is marginal product? Total product N minus total product N minus 1. Clear? Understood? Now, 20 by 1, 20. 50 by 2, 25. 90 by 3, 30. 120 by 4, 30. 140 by 5, 28. 150 by 6, 25. 150 by 7, 21.43. 140 by 8. 17.5 that means what suppose if you have appointed three people if I have appointed three people what are they producing 90 units that means every individual is contributing 30 30 30 is the true maybe or may not be that's the problem so I cannot rely on the average product information that's the reason we should also identify marginal product every extra labor one extra labor what is he contributing first one is only 20 even it will be 20 Next second fellow, 50 minus 20, that is third fellow, 90 minus 50. First one is contributing 20 units a day. Second labor is contributing 30 units. Third labor is contributing, but what did average product said? If you have appointed three people, everyone is producing 30. But the reality is 20, 30 and 40. It is not 30, 30 and 30. That's the reason we will identify marginal product we don't take a decision just because of average product clear now see there let us calculate average product next 120 minus 90 30 140 minus 120 20 150 minus 140 10 150 minus 150 0 140 minus 150 minus 10 so this is the information which we have got with tp ap and mp suppose if you are a owner how many laborers will you employ until how many laborers will you employ? 7. Why? Sir, same like LDMU, only after appointing 7 fellow, we got to know he is not contributing anything. Even before appointing 7th, we didn't add an assumption that he don't contribute. Because when I appointed 6th fellow, he is contributing 10. With the same assumption, we will appoint a 7th idiot fellow, but that 7th idiot fellow is not contributing. So, we will stop it. We don't appoint beyond 7. That is what? Remember, whenever TP is maximum, TP is? MP will be. And there is one more beautiful point here. That is what I used to give an example of Innova car. Innova car example. What is that? Suppose uh, you friends have planned to go for a trip after CA foundation exam. Say 6 friends have planned to go for a trip. Okay, you will book a car. Which car? So, total there are 7 seats. How many seats are there? So, first seat belongs to the driver. You can't sit there because he has to drive. Now, first friend will come and say total 2 people. Second fellow will come. Third fellow will come. Fourth fellow will come. Fifth fellow will come. Totally, there are 6 people inside the car. So, there is one more seat empty. What happens? There is 7 only. Concentrate. concentration. Now, what you think, sir? Let that one seat be empty. We have luggages also. Let's go comfortable and come back. But definitely when your friends are planning, will you keep that one seat empty? Highly impossible. Even that seventh fellow will come inside a car. Now how many seats are there? Seven seats. This is fixed. You can't change the seats. Correct? This is a fixed factor. Number of people coming inside the car. That is variable. That is? Now even that was seven. What has happened? Now, fixed factor has become equal to. That means, you are optimally utilizing the resources. You are not wasting any of the seats or you are not overloading the people inside a car. That is when, when marginal product becomes, that is called as optimum utilization of Optimum utilization of resources. Clear? Now, look at the board. One sec. This is the place where the second stage will end. Which is the second stage? Stage of. So, the second stage will end when total product is maximum and marginal product is zero. So, observe the meanings very carefully. Proportion of fixed factor will become equal to 
seating capacity is 7 number of people coming inside the car is also 7 it is going to become equal fixed and variable both will become equal that is what they are saying in first stage fixed factor say only 3 people are inside the car or 4 people seating capacity is number of people Still, fixed factors are more, variable factors are less. That means still we can employ the people. Until when we will employ the people, when fixed and variable both becomes? Just assume. Shashikiran was waiting in a bus stand. You people were passing by. Hey, wait, wait, wait. One tarcher fellow is standing. Wait, let's speak and go. Hello, sir. What are you doing? Waiting for flight. Then what? In bus stand, I am. Then what? for what purpose I will be waiting? So, where do you want to go? I want to go from Rajaji Nagar to my home. Come, come, we are also going same way. You don't know, we are going trip. Come, we will drop you till there. Okay, this thin fellow coming inside as a 8 person. How do you feel now? Completely congested? Not satisfied at all? Completely suffocating inside and moreover, you are not comfortable to sit. That is what happens even in organization. When you appoint beyond the capacity, 8 fellow, see, efficiency is decreasing. Efficiency is decreasing. That means productivity is coming down. It is leading to a negative factor. So, this is stage of negative return. Stage of negative returns. Clear? Now, when will stage 1 end? At the fourth unit. Because when average product is equal to marginal product. That is stage 1. It is going to end. There is one more additional topic which you have to remember. That is point of inflection. What is it point of? So, point of inflection is a condition where marginal product is maximum. Marginal product is until point of inflection. Until inflection, TP is increasing faster. TP is increasing faster. After point of inflection, no doubt TP is increasing. 90 is become 120, 140, 150. But it is not increasing faster, it is increasing slower. It is increasing. So, only and only until point of inflection. Only and only until point of inflection, TP is increasing faster. TP is increasing after point of inflection, TP is no doubt increasing. But is it increasing faster? TP is increasing slower. Why? Because MP started to decrease mp started to that's the reason clear so when we are understanding relationship between tp and mp relationship between open your books you have already written there so condition one tp increases even mp is also that is tp increases at increasing until until it reaches point of inflection that is not inflation after point of inflection what is happening no doubt tp is but mp is that is tp increases at diminishing after after point of inflection. Clear? This is where the twister in the story. The point of inflection. Until point of inflection, MP increases faster. After MP starts increasing faster, it will start decreasing. When MP is decreasing, when MP is, TP will decrease or increase. Increase. But increase at a decreasing rate, diminishing rate or a slower rate. Clear? And next, when TP is maximum, TP is, MP will be, when MP is 0, what is it called as? Optimum utilization of resources. Last but not the least, last stage, SNR. When TP is decreasing, when TP is, MP will become negative. When TP is decreasing, MP will become negative. Clear? Understood? So, this is what the relationship is. Here, this point 1, this is the most important one. Because of point of inflection, TP increases at dash rate. 
increasing rate tp increases at increasing rate clear understood so this is what is the concept of law of variable proportion see there at last stage variable factor became more than fixed factor shashikir an eighth fellow came inside the car variable factor became more fixed factor became less this is where efficiency drops down output will decrease and no manufacturer will prefer to operate even when we are discussing about ac like this if you remember cost average variable cost average fixed cost that is the place where stage 2 everyone will prefer to operate because ac becomes afc is equal to abc clear this is what the concept of law of variable proportion conclusion is every manufacturer will prefer to operate in which stage where tp is maximum and mp is zero clear understood so this is the concept of law of variable proportion so if you remember we also discussed the tata shell what was it whenever ap is increasing when ap is mp increases faster than ap see here 20 25 30 20 30 40 which is increasing faster mp is increasing faster clear next when ap is maximum 30 ap is equal to mp next when ap is decreasing see here 30 28 25 21 but mp 30 20 10 0 -10 which is decreasing faster mp logic satisfied so this is what the concept of tata is shell so that was law of variable proportion any doubts in law of variable proportion so second one is law of so this is production function under long run production function under 1 lakh benches one year at time so impact on output is due to change in more factors of production i can change anything and everything land can also be changed labor can be changed capital can be changed even organization can also be change but we assume that organization remains fixed and so only three factors of production land labor and so in this also i'm making one more assumption say i already have a bigger land space i already have a so land is a fixed factor land is a only labor and capital is a variable factor so what is happening whenever i am investing on one machinery that is on capital i need two laborers how many laborers are required two laborers see there on every one single capital that i invest i also need two laborers so two laborers plus one capital is called as one unit is called as so every unit consists of one machinery that is one capital and two laborers how many laborers two laborers and last two assumption remains fixed what is that technology remains and no perfect substitutes for so how many stages are there in law of returns to scale which are those three stages and already you know that in the previous concept we took a decision based on marginal product on which marginal product and moreover i have already explained in irs output increases more proportionate in crs output increases and drs output increases now as i said every unit consists of one capital and two labor if i say second unit two machinery that means two capital and four labor like this i totally have a seven production unit how many production unit so by appointing a first unit they are producing 50 benches in a day second one one and two put together 110 1 2 3 all three put together all four put together 250 all five put together all six put together all seven put together 350 so straight away we will identify a marginal product without wasting the time because average product was not that useful so if the output is continuous in nature the units are continuous in nature then what is the formula of mp tp n minus tp n minus 1 first one is 50 here also it will be 110 minus 50 180 minus 110 250 minus 180 300 minus 250 335 minus 300 350 minus 335 now observe 50 60 70 irs 70 70 irs 50 35 15 this is what as law of returns to scale we consider based on marginal product in irs mp will rise in crs mp remains in drs mp starts 
falling rapidly. This is what is a law of returns to scale. If we represent in the form of a graph, this is how it looks. IRS, CRS, DRS. Clear? And next comes Chota topic, Cobb Douglas production function. To mathematical economist, our normal economist, what they explain only, we don't understand. Now, mathematical economist, they have tried to explain returns to scale with a mathematical equation. Q is equals to KL of A and C of B. In this Q is quantity, L is land, C is capital. See there, sorry, L is labor. For every single capital I invest, I said two laborers are required. One machinery, two laborers. Like that, they are also considering the same way. This K, A and B are positive constant. K, A and B are positive constant. Suppose if A plus B is greater than 1, that is IRS. If A plus B is equal to 1, CRS. If A plus B is lesser than 1, decreasing returns to scale or diminishing returns to scale. This is what we call it as Cobb Douglas production function. So that will bring us to the next last topic of the chapter, ISO quant and ISO. Already we discussed indifference curve and budget line. What is it? Indifference curve and? So what was indifference curve? All those combination of two commodity which gives same level of out faction here. Now here two factor inputs same level of here we are discussing about input and output. Over there input was two commodity, output is same level of satisfaction. Here two factor inputs out of land, labor, capital, organization, any two factor input that will give same level of output connected in the form of a curve is called as isoquant curve and this concept is similar to indifference curve concept of consumer behavior and this will be downward sloping dash to the origin. Reason. Ah, what is it? Diminishing rate of substitution or ditto, ditto, same concept there. I took the example of tea and biscuit. Let me say here I will take the example of labor and machine or machine and labor, anything. It will be always diminishing rate of substitution. That's the reason it will be dashed to the origin, convex to the origin. Here we are considering two elements. One factor inputs by compulsorily considering two factor inputs, we get same level of output similar to indifference curve concept. No differences at all. Clear? That is from a customer point of view. Sorry. That was from a consumer point of view. Two goods, same level of satisfaction. Consumer point of view. Here it is. Producer point of view. Two inputs, same level of output. Next, ISO cost. This is similar to budget line. What was budget line? All those combination of two commodity, which will make the consumer to at the given income and price level. Income and over there, two commodity income and price level. Here, two factor inputs too, which will make the manufacturer to spend equal amount of money. This is similar to budget line concept of consumer behavior. Here, two factor inputs, which I can buy or which I can employ within the same amount of money. That is what is ISO cost. Same to same concept, but this is from a manufacturer point of view. Over there, income line and price line. That was given. But here, same amount of money. Say I have 3000 rupees with me to spend in a one single day. I need to employ two, machinery and labor. Suppose if labor cost me 750 rupees per day, if machine cost me 500 rupees per day. Now, these combination of two things I need to deploy. Say now I am going to appoint two labors. How many labors? So, with the remaining money, I will appoint three machinery. I will buy three machinery. To operate this three machinery, I want two labors. Now see there, 500 into 3, 1500, 750 into 2, 1500. I am completely spending the equal amount of money on all those combination of two inputs. All those combination of two inputs. Clear? This is what the concept of ISO cost and ISO quant. By this chapter 5, sorry, chapter 3, theory of production and theory of cost comes to an end. Clear?